Here's the defensive alignment for the Middletown Giants. In the outfield, Daquila Doc will play left field. Osgood in center field and Beauregard in right field. Around the infield, Acabo at third, Aquilo at shortstop, Koenig at second base, and Walters at first base. Greco will be doing the catching, and as we said, Nick Allen on the mound. And Nick Allen uh, struck out 10 batters in the season, opposing hitters hitting 250 off of him. And 29.1 innings pitched. It's even record of two wins and two losses, 2.76 earned run average in four appearances. Nick Allen is from Villanova University, the native of Green Lane, Pennsylvania. Six feet tall, 185 pounds. He's a right-hand pitcher. And a bright, sunny day here. Perfect day for a game once again, the second day in a row, as uh, the shade is creeping up on the left side of the field. About, well, all of left field's in the shade. Half the outfield, all the way up to the 400 sign in dead center field is pretty much in the shade, but the infield prior to the second base bag is all in blazing sun. So home plate umpire dusts off home plate. John Cronin, Wick Udy, and Mike Sokol to schedule three here in the top of the first. Game just underway. John Cronin's the uh, Twister's second baseman. Coming into the game at an even 200. He has seven hits on the season so far. He's a right-hand batter, steps in. The catcher, Greco, is on the mound right now, having a word with Nick Allen, and now he's making his way back to home plate. And now he's set. And Cronin out of... Well, I don't have him on my list. John Cronin, first pitch to him is low in the dirt for ball one. That was the first pitch of the game. Cronin steps out to adjust his gloves, and now he's back in there. Wick Udy on deck. Nick Allen looking in for the sign. The kick and the pitch is low and away for ball two. Two ball, one strike count on John Cronin. He looks in again. Middle infielder's playing back. The kick and the 2 nothing pitch is right over the plate, taken in the lower portion of the strike zone for strike one. Two and one goes the count on Cronin. Allen's ready again, and the pitch is a fastball, taking strike two, almost in the same spot, a little bit higher than the other one. Two and two goes the count on John Cronin. And Udy's on deck. A little time to look in for the signs again, and the 2-2 two -two delivery is low and away for ball three. Count goes full now on John Cronin. And yeah, Twister's in third place in the division right now. Had a loss last night in River Point. And the payoff pitch is called strike three as uh, Cronin was on his way down to first base. That looked like it was, that's about as low and away as you can get and have it still be called a strike. That was a good 3-2 pitch right there by Nick Allen. Fastball catches the black. And quickly one down here in the top of the first for Wick Udy. Well, Wick Udy, the Twisters catcher, stepping in, the left-hand batter. He's the designated hitter tonight, as uh, Kloniger is going to get a night behind the plate. The first pitch is a fastball taken, call strike one. Udy uh, is upping his average a little bit. He's gone up to 250 now. He has 12 hits on the season. Scored seven runs, four doubles, and a triple. Pitch is taken low for ball one. A little off speed there. Rick Udy has been really the fire plug in the offense the last couple of nights, driving in some big RBIs. Has been swinging a really good bat for the Twisters. Allen rocks, kicks, and deals. The pitch swung and in the air, landing foul way down in the corner, third base side, about 10 feet foul. Down into the bullpen area, the Middletown Giants down there. Counts one and two on Wick Udy. And Wick Udy out of Oregon State University. He just is adding gloves. Now he's back in there again with a one and two count. Nick Allen on the mound looks in for the sign. He sets the kick and the pitch is way outside. Greco uh, has to jump out of the catcher's position to grab that one. That would have been behind a right-hand batter. <laughs> the count is two and two. 
The 2-2 pitch from Nick Allen is a line drive bouncer to the third baseman. Akabo up with it and throws a real high pitch over the head of first baseman Walters. And Udy goes down to second base. That hit the wall behind first base down there. So that's a two-base error. Well, that throw was air mailed to the people sitting in the first row of the bleachers behind the first base bag as Akabo just let that ball sail on him. He didn't get on top of the throw. Throw went, I mean, the first baseman couldn't even jump for it. It was that high. No. And a two base error, and Wick Udy on base again, somehow, some way. And I'll bring up Mike Sokol to the plate. Yeah, he's had a lot of good luck, but also a lot of patience. A game two nights ago, I think he walked like three or four times in one game. He's 250 average with like a 400 on base. He's been just outstanding for the Twisters. First pitch to Mike Sokol is taken outside corner for strike one. Fastball. Sokol, the left hand batter, he's the first baseman for the Twisters tonight. Sokol comes in at, well, the, the pitch, swung on and missed for strike two. Count goes 0-2 on Sokol. Sokol from Michigan, University of Michigan, Sterling Heights, Missouri. No ball, two strike count with one out. Yuki Beauty takes his lead from second base. The pitch is low and outside for ball one. One ball, two strike count. Sokol comes in at 234. One ball, two strike count. Allen sets the kick. The pitch is popped up center field. Ranging toward his left is Hosgood, and he makes the catch in shallow left center. With Udy stays at second base. Nowhere to go there. Two down. Uh, that'll bring up Jeff Horgan, the Twisters left fielder. He bats right-handed. So Wick Udy down on second base with two out. No score here from Middletown, Connecticut. Allen's first pitch to Horgan is outside corner. Strike one on Horgan. Lee Lipshot's on deck. Horgan has three hits on the season, has scored three times. The pitch is low and away for a ball. A little too low this time. One ball, one strike to count on Jeff Horgan. So Nick Allen from Villanova University on the mound. He sets, looks back, and turns and fires as if he's going to fire towards second base. Nobody covering. He doesn't let go of the ball. But uh, turned back towards second base at Udy. Made the throwing motion. Nobody was really holding him on. The kick and the pitch. Swing and a miss for strike two on Horgan. One ball, two strike count on him now. So Jeff Horgan was trying to hit the scoreboard on that swing. That was a vicious hack by Horgan. Really opened up on the swing there. But it came up empty and it counts one and two. So Nick Allen ready again. He sets the kick, the pitch. Line drive, falling in for a base hit into left center. Wick Udy rounds third. He's on his way home. The throw in will be cut off by the pitcher and they wouldn't have got him anyway. Wick Udy comes in to score on the single by uh, Jeff Horgan. So one nothing the score. The Twisters take the lead here in the bo- in the top of the first inning with two out. It's a big hit by Jeff Horgan there. He's down on the count one and two. Gets a hanging curveball and just smacks it to left center field. Wick Udy on the crack of the bat, taking off from second base, easily scoring. And the Twisters have struck first for a one nothing lead. That'll bring up Lee Lipschutz, the right fielder. The first pitch to him from Allen is a check swing foul bouncing into the Twister dugout on the first base side. 0-1 the count. And Lipschutz comes in at 220. Has 18 hits on the season, three doubles and two triples. Nick Allen looks in for the sign from the catcher. He sets the kick. The pitch is a little bit high and inside for ball one. Counts even one ball, one strike on Lipschutz. Lipschutz from Stony Brook College. Right-hand hitter up there with a runner on first. The pitch is swung on and missed for strike Two. One ball, two strike count. Eric Kloniger on deck. Well, Lipschutz made a really great play in center field, but they called it a trap ball last night. Controversial call. The pitch is swung and popped up third base side. Going way toward the fence is Akabel, the third baseman, and it's out of play into the stands beyond the third base dugout. A lot of foul ground territory here at Palmer Field. One of the 
biggest foul areas I've seen in the, out of all the NECBL stadiums that we've been to. But there's a lot of ground and foul ground, and catchers or third or first basemen can't give up on anything as they could pretty much cover a good 100 feet from the bleachers to the foul line and foul ground. Pitch is swung on and missed for strike three. Side is retired. Lip shuts down on strikes. But the Twisters score a run. They take the one nothing lead here from Middletown at the end of a half an inning between the Twisters and the Middletown Giants. Twisters baseball on WAPJ is brought to you with underwriting by the First Assembly of God, home of the Torrington Christian Academy for students kindergarten through 12th grade and Kitty College Nursery School for three- and four-year-olds. First Assembly of God, 387 New Harmington Road, Torrington, also has a vacation Bible school. The phone number is 482-7464. And by the Northwest Hills Credit Union, located at 339 North Elm Street in Torrington. Serving the financial needs of those living, working, worshiping, or attending school in Torrington, as well as the Northwest Connecticut Chamber of Commerce. And by Roma Pizza, 24 High Street, Torrington, and 81 Main Street, Canaan, Featuring New York-style traditional pizza, plus calzones, grinders, salads, pasta, and dinner. Pizzas are brick oven baked at Roma Pizza. So Jason Jones will start for the Twisters tonight. He's completing his warm-up tosses. Comes into the game with a 2.20 earned run average. Has a 1-2 and two loss record on the season in five appearances. In 28.2 innings pitched, he has struck out 32 batters. Has walked only three batters, and opposing hitters are hitting just 179 off of him. So Anthony Aquilino, Lance Koenig, and Joshua Beauregard, the scheduled three here at the top of the order, here in the bottom of the first for the Middletown Giants. And defensively for the Twisters in the outfield, Horgan in left field, Rutkowski in center, Lipschutz in right field. In the infield, Etri at third base, Farrell the shortstop, Cronin at second base, and Sokol playing first. Kroniger, first look at him behind the plate tonight and with Jason Jones on the mound. Jones out of Liberty College from Pasadena. Six feet, five inches tall, 220 pounds. So we're just about ready here as Anthony Aquilino is coming to the plate. Home plate umpire just dust off home plate. And the shade is creeping up. The mound is in the shade now. The in middle infield and the shade's gone almost into right center field now. So that'll bring up Anthony Aquilino, the Giants shortstop. He's the leadoff hitter, bats right-handed. Jones looks in for the sign. The kick and the first pitch is fastball down the middle, and that's called strike one on Aquilino. The Aquilino is from Lemoyne College. Jason Jones, pitch is swung on and a bouncer down to third base. Eatry up with it, throws down to Sokol at first, one down. That was kind of an inside pitch on Aquilino, but he was able to hit it down to third base, but right to Eatry. Uh, Jason Jones needs to snap that curveball off a little more. That one kind of hung a little bit on the inside portion of the plate. Got lucky with a little ground ball to third. And the guys won, like, just like last night, the, the sun sets in left field, so Mike Sokol, all the throws to him this inning are going to be in the sun. Lance Koenig, the batter, the first pitch to him from Jones. The fastball taken, called strike down the middle. The Koenig, the second baseman, he's a right-hand hitter. From Monmouth University. Jones kicks, delivers, and pitches inside a little bit low for ball one. Count goes even on Koenig, one ball, one strike. And one out here, one nothing to score. The Twisters with the lead here in Middletown. The 1-1 delivery is inside, a little bit high for ball two. Two and one on Koenig. Josh, Joshua Burgard on deck. It's funny, too, because there's a gentleman with a radar gun three rows in front of me, and I'm going to talk about this in just one second. The 2-1 delivery from Jones is taken low for ball three. Jones is ringing the gun at about 90, 91 miles an hour in the first inning here as I'm looking at the radar gun right now. So Jones has got a good fastball tonight. Koenig has an open stance up there at the plate. The 3-1 delivery is up, taken high for ball four. So a one-out walk drawn by Lance Koenig here in the bottom of the first. And that's only Jones' fourth walk of the year. And if I remember correctly, one of the walks he has on his, on his stats is actually an intentional walk. So uh -huh. Jones giving up a free pass, very rare. 
And now one out man on first base. Joshua Beauregard will step in now, the Giants right fielder, the left-hand hitter. First pitch to him is taken high, and uh, Koenig down there was taken off. He was almost halfway down to second base, and Kloniger jumped up, and he just, Koenig turned around and came back to first base. Well, Jason Jones uses a slide step with a runner on first base to try to eliminate the stolen base, and I think Koenig was going to take off, but when he saw the slide step, he kind of stopped and came back. The pitch to Beauregard is taken on the outside corner for strike one. Count goes even on a one ball, one strike. Rutkowski playing straight away center field. He's right in, in line with the 400 sign. Koenig takes his lead. Throw down to first and he's back safely diving. And you could tell the sun was bothering Sokol on that pickoff attempt because he kind of put the glove out real late on that. Real hard for him. Real, real hard for him to see that ball coming on the pickoff attempt with the sun right in his eyes. Jones ready. He turns and fires down. Head for slide. Back safely again is Koenig. Good move by Jones. Both plays pretty close at first base, and Jones keeping that runner close. Plus, he slide steps, too, so he really cuts down the stolen base threat. The 1-1 delivery is a, an off-speed pitch taken outside, and the throw down to second base goes into center field. It was an off-play, off, off play, and down to, center field, down to third base goes Koenig. Well, the throw from uh, Kloniger was a little too... To the, to the right of uh, Farrell covering the bag, and he wasn't able to reach over and get it. It went into shallow right center. So down to the third base is Koenig. Tell you if that was a good throw down to second base. They had Koenig as he was definitely, the ball was definitely there before he was, but the throw up the right field line and goes in center, and now runner on third with only one down. Counts one and two. The pitch to Beauregard is fouled on the screen behind home plate right above the on-deck area on the third base side. Count still one and two with one out. Runner on third now. On an E2. Koenig down on third. So the right-hand hitter, Beauregard, up there with a one-ball, two-strike count. The kick and the pitch is swung and fouled at the exact same spot as the previous pitch. Still one and two with one out here in the bottom of the first. Oh, the right fielder lip shots in the sun out there as is Sokol. And the pitch is swung and fouled straight back over our heads here in the press box, behind the press box here. Count still one ball, two strike on Beauregard. Uh, Josh Beauregard from Eckerd College. He's a native of Deltona, Florida. A little bit of time here now. He's back in the batter's box. Infield playing fairly shallow particularly on the first base side. The pitch is outside for ball two. Count goes even two and two. Tim D'Aquila is on deck. And Cronin and Sokol playing shallow on the infield there. The pitch is swung and fouled back again on the roof of the grandstand here. Heck of an at-bat right now for Josh Beauregard. He's seen seven pitches in this at-bat. And battling a couple tough, tough pitcher pitches, and he's keeping himself alive, trying to drive the ball to the outfield as the infield is actually playing halfway to possibly cut this run down at the plate. Jones' delivery is a line drive into right field, coming in his lip shuts, and he makes the, the catch right at his feet. The throw into home, and they got Koenig out at home plate trying to come home. What a play by Lee Lipschutz. Coming in and making the shoestring catch, and then throwing and getting the runner coming in, Koenig from third base. Nice double play there to end the inning as uh, nobody scores. Very close to scoring there. The score is still one to nothing. The Twisters with the one-run lead after one complete. And Torrington Twister action on WAPJ is brought to you with underwriting by Litco Supply and the bold look of Kohler at 261 Oak Avenue in Torrington. They have courteous expert staff ready to help you with every plumbing, heating, air conditioning, and water treatment needed. Litco Supply has been providing quality service for over 50 years. Their hours are Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., and Saturdays from 8 a.m. to 12 noon. The Litco Supply showroom has the Kohler Chen Jet Body Spa. That's Litco Supply, 261 Oak Avenue in Torrington. The number is 489-4179 or on the web at litcosupply.com. And by Alberta Waste, LLC in Torrington, owned and operated by Robert Alberta, a trusted name in waste removal for over 30 years. Industrial, residential, commercial, whatever your needs, Robert Albreda and his staff can handle it for you. The number is 482-9444. 
Well, Nick Allen on the mound for the Middletown Giants. He'll work to Eric Kloniger, Rob Eatry, and Lou Farrell, the six, seven, and eight hitters for the Twisters here in the top of the second. The Twisters have a one nothing lead. I'll tell you that one nothing lead preserved by an unbelievable play by Lee Lipschutz in right field as he came charging in for that ball, shoe topped it right above the top of his shoes, but came up throwing and he threw a strike to home and nailed the runner out at the plate for the double play. That's his second assist now in two straight games as Toynton preserves their one nothing lead going into the top of the second inning. Here's Eric Kloniger, the twister catcher tonight. First at bat with the club. He's a right-hand hitter. The first pitch to him is taken over the plate for strike one. Oh, he did play in last night's game. It's his second at bat already. So Allen kicks, delivers. Pitch is taken on the outside corner for strike two on him. Two quick strikes here in the top of the second. Well, uh, Kloniger is from Liberty University. Pitch is swung and a bouncer to second base. Ranging to his right is Koenig and the toss down to first. They got him for out number one. Four to three. A little roller down there. Slow roller. So that'll bring up Rob Eatry, the twister third baseman, with one down here. Eatry's a left-hand batter from Brigham Young University. The kick in the first pitch is a fastball that drops and is low for ball one. Right over the plate, but low. The one nothing pitch is a line drive base hit right into the center field for Rob Eatry. So a one-out single here for Eatry. That was a nice hit. And Rob Eatry's been swinging a good bat for the Twisters as well and just line a base hit right over the head of the pitcher, Allen, into center field for a single. And now Lou Farrell trying to get something going here in the second as Torrington leads one to nothing. Yeah, Lou Farrell, the shortstop's up there. He's a left-hand hitter. Farrell from Sam Houston State. He's from Conroe, Texas. Nick Allen kicks, delivers, swung, and foul straight back behind the plate. One little bouncer. So Eatry down on first now. The shade is almost covering the whole field already. That happens really quick. The only person affected by it now is the right fielder, Beauregard. And even him, it depends on where it stands. Way down in the corner is only in the sun. Turns and throws down to first base. Head first slide back safely is Eatry. A fairly quick move by uh, Nick Allen out there. So Allen ready again. He sets, and the pitch is high. Taken high outside for ball one. Count goes even. One ball, one strike on Farrell. Farrell, the number eight hitter for the Twisters. Blake Rutkowski's on deck. Walters holding on. E3, the pitch is taken on the inside for strike two. One ball, two strikes on Farrell now. And playing very close to the line is Daquila in left field. A little bit shallow, fairly close to the line. The turn to throw down to first again, back safely is Eatry. One out here in top of the second. Allen's pitch is swung and foul back on the grandstand, the roof of the grandstand behind home plate. Count remains one and two on Lou Farrell. Farrell takes a moment to adjust his batting gloves, and he's getting back in the batter's box. As Nick Allen on the mound leans in for the sign, Eatry takes his lead from first. The kick and the pitch is taken low for ball two. Count goes even two and two on Farrell. A big hole between first and second with the runner being held and second baseman playing, pinching for the double play. Lou Farrell, a little ground ball between there, gets himself a base hit. Allen turns and throws down again. Back standing up this time is Eatry. Safely. Kind of surprised how shallow the left fielder that Quila is, too. He's well in. And you're right, guarding the line. Long look in for the sign. Nick Allen stepped off and glanced over toward first base. No throw. Now he's ready again. He sets at the belt to kick the 2 2 pitch. The line drive. First base side, way down in the corner. Foul. About three feet foul, way down there. Uh, Lou Farrell turned on that hanger, and he almost started balling the right, get, right field corner, just missing the chalk. Yeah. And that would have been trouble all the way down the 322 sign, as that ball would have definitely reached the wall. And it would have been interesting to see if Eatry was sent home because he was not running at the crack of the bat. Lou Farrell turns on that pitch. This is one of the first times I've really seen him turn on a pitch. 
and really drive it to right field. Well, a fairly sparse crowd here, and the pitch swung on, bouncer, hard hit at first baseman Walter as he turns and fires down to second to get Etri, and then they fire down to first base, and they get the double play. Nice play by the Middletown Giants. Etri forced out at second, three to six. That should be three outs, and nobody's nobody's coming in as the inning should be over, but that should be three outs because Cloninger grounded out the second. Right. And that's the that's the end of the inning, as that should be three outs. <laughs> and nobody is going in for Middletown. <laughs> the Middletown Giants don't want to leave the field. They want and to give the Twisters another chance. <laughs> that's the third out of the inning. Right. And they have Blake Ratowski on the way to the mound. Right. And the umpire is coming over to discuss it. And nobody came off the <laughs> We've seen everything now. This is just unbelievable. Every game we cover on our road games, we have seen just about everything. Now we have it all under control as, yes, the Torrington Twisters are coming home, coming out to the field, and the Middletown Giants are going back in the dugout. Seen just about everything. Yeah, that was a surprise. <laughs> it is true. That definitely three outs. Yeah. Torrington Twister Baseball and WATJ is brought to you with underwriting by Libby's Torrington Furniture, 104 Main Street in downtown Torrington, now in their 74th year, featuring three floors of fine furniture, country, traditional, and contemporary. That's Libby's Torrington Furniture, 104 Main Street, downtown Torrington. By Aero Prescription Center, 26 McDermott Avenue, Torrington, where blood pressure and cholesterol checks and diabetic screenings are a regular occurrence three times a week. At Aero Prescription Center, 26 McDermott Avenue, in Torrington. And by the Winstead Super Saver, 372 Main Street, Winstead, the local IJ store with the personal touch. Their specialist in meats at the Winstead Super Saver, 372 Main Street in Winstead. Well, bottom of the second we go. Tim Dequila, Ron Acabo, and Justin Walter. The fourth, fifth, and sixth hitters for the Middletown Giants do up to face Jason Jones. The tall right-hander for the Twisters out there. And Jason Jones bailed out of a little trouble in the bottom of the first on a Line them out to right field play by Lipschutz, who made a beautiful shoestring catch through home to get the ta- runner Lance Koning, who was tagging up at third trying to score. Score that an L line out nine to two put out double play, and Jones was out of the inning unscathed. And Torrington clings to their one nothing lead here in the bottom of the second. Well, Tim Daquila steps in, the left fielder for the Giants. And Jones on the mound. He's ready. He looks in for the signs from Conniger. The kick, the pitch is taken. A curveball inside portion of the strike zone for strike one. Tricky pitch by Jones. Right, good deuce. Had a Sequilla bailing on that first pitch. The 0-1 delivery is a hit high in the air to center field. Coming in is Rutkowski, and he makes the catch in shallow center field. That was directly center field. That's how he was playing. He's aligned with the 400-foot uh, sign out there. Came in and made the catch. Out number one. That'll bring up Ron Acabo, the Giants' third baseman. Coming in, he's a left-hand batter. Moves the dirt around, and he's ready. He digs in. Really digs in. Now he's ready. <laughs> Building himself a little home there. Jason Jones' first pitch is a fastball, low and away for ball one. Acabo uh, from the University of Hartford. The native of Connecticut. The kick and the one nothing pitch is swung foul, third base side into the stands. Infield dirt here, a little different. Not like a clay, it's more like a gravel. It's something they used in the early 90s, and it's like a gravel infield. It's very hard to explain, but it's much different and harder to get yourself dug in at the plate. The 1 1 pitch is a bouncer, ground ball, the first base in Sokol. He'll take it himself unassisted for out number two here in the top of the second. Well, pretty good efficient inning for Jason Jones thus far. Five pitches, two outs, and now Justin Walters to the plate. And Jason Jones, I haven't seen pitch in a while. He seems to always have a start on Friday or Saturday, the games I can't cover, and it's just a pleasure to watch him pitch. He throws upper 80s, low 90s, has a nasty nose-to-toe curveball, good changeup, and will mix in a slider every once in a while, and usually in control as he's walked just four batters this year. His first pitch to Justin Walters is swung on and missed first. Strike one. Actually, he did a little piece of that one right behind the plate, a little foul ball. 
One thing I like about Jones, too, is his ability to work the inside part of the plate. He's very good with his fastball at keeping that ball inside on the right. He's not afraid to pitch inside. A lot of times you see a pitcher wanting to work the outside corner a lot. He works the inside just as well. Pitch is check swing. And a low and away pitch for strike two on Justin Walters. Walters, a right-hand batter. And two awful swings by Walters in the first two pitches. The 0-2 pitch from Jones is swung on and missed for strike three. One, two, three inning here in the second. Ending with a strikeout of Walters. Very quick inning for Jason Jones and the Twisters here in the bottom of the second inning. So the score, one nothing. The Twisters with the lead here from Palmer Stadium in Middletown. <laughs> the Twisters baseball action on WATJ is brought to you with underwriting by the Northwest YMCA. They have two locations, one on Prospect Street in Torrington, the other on Main Street in Winstead. And again this year, the YMCA is providing complimentary workouts for your Twisters players. That is the Northwest YMCA. By Thoreau and Knoll, handling professional service needs. Two important names to remember are Thoreau and Knoll. Their website is taxnag.com. Also by Carbone's Market, 221 Oak Avenue, Torrington. They have the famous grinder that's a meal in itself. Carbone's also features hot foods and salads. That's Carbone's Market, 489-8164. Well, we enter the third, Blake Rutkowski. And then back to the top of the order with John Cronin and Wick Udy to schedule three for the Twisters here in the third to face Nick Allen. And here's Jeff with the play-by-play. And Torrington leading one to nothing in the first inning. After now was recorded, Wick Udy hit a ground at a third. That the third baseman, Akabo, airmailed into the stand. Wick Udy was awarded second base on the overthrow. And after Mike Sokol was retired on a fly ball to the center fielder, Jeff Horgan came up with a big RBI single to the left center field gap. That drove home Wick Udy, and Torrington took a 1-0 lead. And the big defensive play of the game thus far already is the big play that out of the right field, Lee Lipschutz catching a line drive at his shoe tops off the bat of Josh Bogart, and then doubling up Lance Koning at the plate as Koning tried to tag up and score. And that's the second assist for Lee Lipschutz in as many nights, and the defensive play of the game thus far as Torrington leads 1-0 in the top of the third inning. Blake Ratowski, your center fielder for the Twisters, batting ninth tonight. Coming into the game with a 125 average and has four RBIs to his credit. And the right-handed batter awaits the first pitch from Allen. And he dropped the drag bunt down the third base line, and it is beautiful. Acapo, Ac- Aco- Acabo has to just let the ball go. He waits to see if it goes foul, and it does not as it just went right up the line. And a beautiful drag bunt single for Blake Rutowski to lead off here in the top of the third. You know, that, that's, I think that's the best fun I've seen. That's the perfect one because nobody can do anything with it. You've got to let it roll all the way so it, just in case it goes foul, and that one didn't. That's, that really gets them in a situation right there. They can't do anything about it. That ball rolled up the truck and just did not come off of it. And a leadoff bunt single by Blake Rutowski. Way to get things going for the Twisters. Now bring up the right-handed hitting John Cronin, batting in the leadoff spot tonight, playing second base. Takes a high fastball outside, ball one. The count to one ball, no strikes. Cronin struck out looking his first time up. And runner on first, nobody out. Torrington up one to nothing. And Nick Allen on the mound for the Middletown Giants. And the stretch and delivers. A fastball misses low. And the count's now two balls and no strikes. Well, perfect opportunity here for Coach Hunt to try and maybe possibly hit and run. With the batter up two balls and no strikes. Runner on first. And a big hole between first and second for Cronin to shoot at. And the runner does not go, and the pitch is called strike one over the heart of the plate. And the count now two balls and one strike. Cronin inserted into the lineup tonight in the leadoff spot, playing second base. As Garrick Evans gets the night off, Nick Allen looks in for the sign, checks the runner. Rutowski modest lead. Allen takes a long look at first. Now Rutowski breaks, and a bunt attempt by Cronin, and foul as he popped it up as the runner was in motion. And not a hit and run, but a, a, a bunt attempt by Cronin with the runner in motion. I think what they're trying to do there is drop the bunt down to the third baseman on Cabo, make him field it, and what they're going to do is bl- bring Blake Rutowski all the way around second to third, and that's a design play. Mm. And it did not work as Cronin could not execute the bunt properly, but that's what he was trying to do there was make the third baseman field that. And unless the pitcher's heads up and covers third, that base is unoccupied, and you can put, swipe third on the same play. Token throw to first. Rutowski back standing up. Completely shaded, completely shaded field now as there's no sun on the field at all. Quickly as it covered the field from the start of the game. 
2-2 pitch on the way. Allen comes to set. Rutowski breaks the 2-2, swung on and missed, and they go to throw down to first base, and they're going to rule that the batter got in the way, and they're going to make the runner go back as batter's interference, and this is the call that Torrington could not get last night, and they're going to make Rutowski go back to second base. So Cronin swinging a miss, and then tipped, kind of fell across the plate, and as the catcher Greco tried to throw, Cronin and him got all tangled up. And they call Blake Krutowski out on the play. And that ends up being a double play as batter's interference. And we've just about seen everything you can see in away games this year. These are some odd plays. That's odd. I'm surprised. And now Wick Udy, two outs, nobody on. And Wick Udy to the plate, 0 for 1 in the game, reached on an error. And first pitch high, ball one. He did come around to score on the error. So officially 0 for 1 in the ball game. And once again, for a play like that, what do you score on Rutkowski at second base? How does that get put in the scorebook? B.I., batter's interference. <laughs> oh. Ground ball down the first baseline and foul just outside the line. That's an odd one. And the count's now one ball and one strike. Well, we've seen some pretty interesting things happen. We've seen a team get three outs and not want to come off the field in this game already. <laughs> we've seen a beautiful play by Lee Lipschutz in right field, throwing a runner out at home. We've seen just... We've now seen a batter's interference call. And you know what's funny, too, is that play last night that Coach Hunt argued against River Point was the same exact play that just happened in that game. We didn't get the call. Twisters did not get the call. And the runner on first went all the way to third because the throw went to center field. Wick Udy was complaining that he couldn't throw the ball. The batter was in his way. That's exactly the call Torrington was looking for last night. Ball two down low. And that was actually a big run of the ball game. And that ended up being the fourth run of the ball game. So a call last night that went against us and the same call goes against us here tonight and now two and one in the count Allen delivers fastball swung on off the tip off the pitcher's glove it's going to trickle the second the second baseman picks it up throws the first and safe on a dive in the first base as Wick Udy head first into first base as the ball trickled off the pitcher went to Koning at second Koning kind of nonchalantly threw it to first base like he had plenty of time. Udy does not run well, but Udy dives and hustles into the bag and slides safely and gets himself an infield hit. And now two down and a runner on first. And now that play, that catcher's inter- that batter's interference is just huge. Well, um, that's one of the plays where a pitcher trying to field on the pitcher's mound can hurt the uh, their infielder's chances. Because, I mean, when he stopped that ball, it made uh, Koning a diff- more difficult time getting to the ball. Yeah, well, he slowed it down as a first right. pitch, a strike on the inside corner, nothing in one to Sokol. Sokol's 0 for 1. But you're right, if he lets that ball just go, the second baseman easily picks that ball up and throws the first. Right, but it would have went right to him. Just right. a natural reaction for the pitcher to try to knock that down. There's a ground ball between short and third, diving a cobble to his left. He tries to get up and throw, but he can't get the handle on the ball. And another infield hit, so Torrington not hitting the ball hard by any means has put runners on first and second with two down. And now bring up Jeff Horgan. He's one for one with an RBI in the ball game. And now, as I can just, as I continue to just go ahead and look at this, Wick Udy just swiped third with the pitcher not paying attention. And they're going to say that time was called on the field and that he cannot do that. But that's some heads up baseball by Wick Udy. The pitcher kind of just, everybody kind of just in drift the land, and he just took off to third. But the umpire rules that there was time on the field and he has to go back. But back to my point is that batter's interference is just huge right now because Rutowski retired on the play. Torrington would have bases loaded at least with one out. Now Horgan has to get a two-out hit here. First pitch, fastball outside corner, misses, ball one. The count's one ball and no strikes. Runners on first and second on two infield hits after there was two outs in the inning. And Nick Ellens from the stretch. And Allen checks the runner at second. And the 1-0 pitch on the way. Fastball swung on down the third baseline. Fair ball down the line past the diving of Cabo. Wick Udy coming around third to try to score. The throw to the plate, not in time. And Udy will go in and score. But now the runners are caught in a rundown. The runner on second. Horgan in a rundown. And he is going to be tagged out on the play. As the run does count, Wick Udy crosses the plate. Horgan rounded first. Unfortunately, Sokol didn't go to third. So they were both standing at second base. Horgan caught in the rundown, and that play will go 7-2-3-4-3. Tagged out on the play by the first baseman is Horgan, but a two-out RBI single for him, and the inning comes to a close as one run scores on four base hits. No errors in the inning, and one runner left on. We've completed two and a half here in Middletown, Connecticut. Your Twisters now lead two to nothing. 
Twisters Baseball Action on WAPJ is brought to you with underwriting by Alfredo's Deli, 168 Water Street, Torrington, featuring daily specials. Linguini with sun-dried tomato and basil pesto. Stuffed shells, chicken marsala, penny alla vodka, and fettuccine Alfredo. Daily specials at Alfredo's, 168 Water Street, Torrington. By Connecticut Billiards and Cafe, 683 Winston Road, Torrington, where the emphasis is on fun. Great social gathering place. Connecticut Billiards and Cafe, 683 Winston Road, Torrington. And by Washworks, laundromat and cleaners in the Torrington Plaza at 50 South Main Street. Washworks, wash, dry, and full staff in the downtown plaza at Torrington. Three scheduled hitters for the Middletown Giants in the bottom of the third inning. The catcher, Josh Greco. Rob Hosgood, the center fielder, and Phil Rothkugel, the DA. That's your 7, 8, and 9 for the Middletown Giants as they have sent the minimum number of batters to the plate. They did get a base runner in the first on a walk, but he was erased on the line-out double play to throw to home by Lee Lipschutz as he tried to tag up and score. So Jason Jones has pitched to the minimum number of hitters in the first two innings, and he now has a 2 to nothing lead as we start at the bottom of the third. Torrington scoring one run on four hits last inning as the big call being the batter's interference call on Cronin as the first runner at first, Blake Ratowski, tried to swipe second, and on the swing and a miss by Cronin, he fell back over the plate. The catcher tried to throw to second. They got all tangled up, and the umpire ruled the base runner, Ratowski, out on the batter's interference call, and essentially probably cost it Torrington a run as they came back with three singles after the batter's interference call. Jeff Horgan coming through again with another clutch two-out single to score one run, but then caught in a rundown, and the inning came to an end. And now the bottom of the third, and Josh Greco, the right-handed hitting catcher, hitting 222, six runs, and seven RBI, steps to the plate to face the right-hander Jason Jones. And Jones looks in for the sign, and at the first pitch, there's a fastball right on the inside corner, called strike one. As Jason Jones, ahead of the hitter, nothing and one. Now Greco out of Manhattan College. And Jones looks in for the sign and the delivery on the 0-1. Curveball stays up, though. And the count now evens off. One ball, one strike. Curveball is a little flat right there. Didn't quite come back down. And the count, 1-1. One one. Jones from the full windup. Greco, a right-hander with an open stance, looks in and waits for the pitch. And a fastball misses inside as Jones trying to work the inside part of the plate. And the count now, two balls and one strike. Jason Jones now with a 2 nothing lead. Twisters one run in the first and one in the third. The 2-1 pitch. Check swing. Called strike two. Count evens off two balls and two strikes. Jason Jones has some pretty incredible stuff on the mound. It's just a pleasure to watch him pitch. The 2-2 on the way. Curveball chop. A big, big, big chop behind the plate. Tough play for Cronin. Has to barehand it and throw to first. Not nearly in time. As once that ball hit the plate and bounced about 30 feet up in the air, you knew that Josh Greco, despite even being a catcher, was going to beat that out as there was just no play for Cronin. That was a slow, high bouncer. Cronin had to come in a long way to get it, and Jones couldn't get out beyond the pitcher's mound to get it. That was right at the perfect spot. And again, he got to wait for a long way to come down, and speeding down the bases was Greco. And so an infield hit. That's the third infield hit we've seen in the last four batters. And a runner on first for Greco with nobody out. And that brings up the left-handed hitting center fielder, Hosgood. Shows bunt, pulls back, called ball one. One ball, no strike count. Hosgood hitting 211 on the year, but a very productive 211 with 15 runs scored, two homers, and 12 RBIs. And Hosgood waits the 1-0, and it's a fastball, same place, high and outside. And the count, two balls and no strikes. So a runner on first, held on by Sokol. Everybody else straight away. The middle infielder slightly pinched up for the double play. And a big hole between first and second for the left-hander, Hosgood, to shoot at. And strike on the outside corner, two balls and one strike count. And good pitching by Jones with the hole being between first and second, trying to work Hosgood outside so that he can't pull that ball between the hole. And trying to work him outside so he has to take the ball to left field. And again, fastball outside corner. And the count evens off two balls and two strikes. So give Jones some props for pitching smartly, if that's the correct word to use, as Jones not going to go inside unless he's trying to bust him up and in because he doesn't want Hosgood to shoot the hole between first and second. And runner on first, nobody out. And Jones in the stretch and sets, and the 2-2 just misses off the outside corner. And the count now runs full, three balls and two strikes. 
Interesting to see here if the Middletown Giants put the catcher Josh Greco, the runner on first base, in motion as there's a 3-2 count on the batter Hosgood. Jones in the stretch, checks the runner, the runner not going, the 3-2 pitch, flare down the left field, Horgan on his horse to his right, and he makes the catch right on the line, and makes the catch, throws it back in, one down here in the bottom of the third. Well, uh, Horgan went in toward the line, he caught that ball about 10 feet from the foul line over there in the third base side and left field. Good jump on the ball by Horgan, that brings up Phil Ruth Rothkugel, the DH, he's a nine hitter in the lineup, big, big left-handed hitter, and he looks like a DH. Imagine Pete Incavilia back in the olden days, but from the left side instead of the right side, as that is exactly what he looks like. He is batting 216 on the year, but like Hosgood, has some production. Five runs, two homers, and 11 RBIs. So the low batting averages between the eighth and ninth hitters, but still a lot of production between the two of them. And Ross Kugel steps up. Big left-handed hitter will face Jason Jones. First pitch, his fastball swung on back into the net, and the counts no balls and one strike. Uh, Ralph Kugel from Central Connecticut State University, as was Hosgood. I may have seen them play and didn't realize it, because I did stop by and watch part of one of their games this past spring when I was down on the campus. Hard to forget Ruth Kugel. Ralph Kugel is just a big boy, and there's strike two called on the inside part of the plate. Jones ahead 0-2, and and just like the last batter being a left-handed hitter, the big hole between first and second, Jason Jones just doing everything he can to try to pitch him outside. And then that time he comes in with a hard fastball, tries to bust him up, and he just he just barely gets a piece of it as he just completely tied up Phil Rothkugel. But count remains 0-2 as he did get a piece of it. And on an 0-2 pitch here, it's kind of funny to try to tap the pitcher's mind on where he's going to go with the 0-2. And I'm assuming he's going to try to go off speed outside. But catcher sets up outside, and he goes inside with a slider and backs him off the plate. The count's now one ball and two strikes. That pitch was... It's supposed to be a deuce or a slider on the outside corner. That's where the catcher, Cloninger, Con- set up. But missing badly on that pitch is Jones. And they count now one ball and two strikes. Runner on first, one down. Jones in the stretch and delivers the one-two. Change up and just a piece of it is Rothkugel as he's way out in front. But just barely gets a piece to stay alive. And the count remains one ball and two strikes. Well, the lights are on now. Just the tips of the trees beyond the aluminum stands and... Beyond right field are hitting the sun. Everything's in the shade now. And Jones in the stretch. The one-two offering. Fastball swinging a miss. He gets him swinging. And there is now two down in the inning as that's the second strikeout for Jones. And we go to the top of the order with Anthony Aquilino. He's 0 for 1. Grounded out to Etri his first time up. Runner on first is Josh Greco. He reached base on an infield single. And now two down. And he's still on first base. And Aquilino, the right-handed hitter, it's like the shortstop, I'm sorry, for the Middletown Giants will step up to the plate. Jones in the stretch, slide steps, curveball, swung and flashed foul down the left field line. Counts no balls and one strike. Almost the same exact type of pitch that Aquilino grounded out the third the first time up. A kind of a hanging curveball and the speed enough to fool him and the count 0-1. Jones looks in for the sign, modestly to first base and the 0-1. Fastball inside corner, called strike two. And the count now, no balls and two strikes, as Jason Jones loves to work the inside part of the plate when he has to, and bust a fastball right on the black, and the count's 0-2. Jones looks again for the sign, the 0-2 pitch, curveball right back to the box. Jones makes the play, and flips over to first base in time, and the side is retired. But no runs, one hit, no errors, one runner left on base. And after three innings here at Palmer Field, the Twisters lead 2 to nothing. Coming to Twisters Baseball on WAPJ is brought to you in part with underwriting by Coffee House Plus with locations throughout Torrington and beyond. They don't just have coffee and other beverages, but bakery items including fresh donuts and real New York bagels. Serving baked goods and best eaten coffee, Coffee House Plus has locations in Torrington at 469 East Main Street, 242 South Main Street, and 19 McDermott Avenue, as well as Coffee House Plus stores in Bantam, Burlington, Thomaston, and New Milford. That's Coffee House Plus. And by Days Inn. On the road, there you go, Days Inn. The newly refurbished Days Inn, 391 Winston Road, Torrington, with an indoor heated pool and fitness center. Free continental breakfast at Days Inn. And by Roma Pizza, 24 High Street, Torrington, and 81 Main Street in Canaan. Featuring New York-style traditional pizza, 
plus calzones, grinders, salads, pasta, and dinner. Pizzas are brick oven baked at Roma Pizza. And the scheduled three hitters for the Torrington Twisters here in the top of the fourth inning. Lee Lipschutz, Eric Poninger, and Rob Eatry. Your four, five, your, I'm sorry, your five, six, and seven in the lineup today. As Torrington, two runs, six hits, one error committed. The Middletown Giants, no runs, one hit, and one error. As we head to the top of the fourth, Torrington trying to crawl themselves back to the 500 mark. They are 11 and 12 on the season. That's third place in the Western Division of the NECBL. Three games behind the Westerners. And the Middletown Giants, 11 and 11 on the year. Actually, just one loss less than the Twisters, but enough to be first place in the South Division of the NECBL. They are tied with the Newport... Newport Gold. And Lee Lipschutz gets ready to step to the plate as the starting pitcher for the Middletown Giants, Nick Allen, completes his warm-up tosses. Home plate umpire wipes off the plate, and we're just about ready to get this fourth inning started. As Torrington has scored single runs in the first and the third inning. And Lee Lipschutz, who was a strikeout victim his first time up, steps up 0-1 for 1 in the, on the day. Lipschutz, the right-handed hitting Right fielder for the Twisters tonight and tries to push bunt and it's up the first baseline. The first baseman fields and tries to tag Lipschutz and he does as Lipschutz is out, retired on the first, on the ground ball, the first on the bunt attempt. As that's how the inning started for Torrington last inning on a ground, on a drag bunt single by Blake Ratowski. Lipschutz trying to do the same thing and he's tagged out by the first baseman, Walters. Well, the bunt is a funny play. Either it's a very poorly executed play or it's a splendidly executed play. Type of play that looks wonderful when you do it correctly but looks really bad when it doesn't work out for right. you. Right. And now Cloninger steps to the plate, takes a fastball low outside, ball one, grounded out to the second baseman Coning his first time up. He is officially 0 for 1 in the ball game. Allen in the stretch and delivers the 1-0. Fastball swung on and missed and the count now evens off at one ball and one strike. Cloninger doing the catching tonight. 0 for 1 last night's game. That was the first time we've seen him. And 0 for 1 in this game, officially 0 for 2 on the season. Fastball late on it, swings it down and hits it down the right field line. Foul out of play. And the count now one ball and two strikes. Nick Allen goes probably up mid, maybe mid 80s fastball, but has to set up the fastball with the off speed stuff. And the 1 2 pitch on the way. Fastball, and it's chopped down the third base line. Acabedo has to barehand it, throw to first base, not in time. Collinger gets himself his first base hit of any CBL play as it's an infield single, the fifth infield single of the ball game between both teams. And I mentioned before that this is a gravel infield, and there's a lot of choppers at the plate because it's such a hard infield. Uh, we've seen five infield hits out of the eight hits in the ball game. And Cloninger on first for Rob Eatry. Rob Eatry steps into the plate one for one in the ball game with a single back in the second. That is a strange color to the dirt here. It's kind of a gray to it. And the first pitch foul down the left field line. A lot of foul ground here, but that one will make the stands. It counts no balls and one strike. Well, I talked about I played on this field a couple times when I was younger, and I hated pitching here because it felt like every ground ball was like an AstroTurf ground ball. It would have tons of speed through the infield. And not only did it have speed, but it also would chop at the plate when you throw deuces in the 0-1 pitch, fastball called strike two, 0-2. And two. But you get, the, you get a curveball or a sinker ball pitcher here, somebody who has to keep the ball down, and make it, you could have them nub it into the ground all you want. They just get these Baltimore chops. It seems like the ball just hits and bounces way up in the air. And you give up a lot of infield singles. 0-2 pitch fouled off and out of play. Defensive swing by Eatry keeps them alive. The count remains 0-2. But it's very frustrating for a pitcher to pitch here because the hard infield just gives so many infield hits up. And we've seen that already. Eight hits in the ball game. We've seen five infield singles. 0-2 pitch from Allen. Fastball call. Strike three on the inside part of the plate. Etri goes down looking. And there's now two down here in the top of the fourth. Cloninger remains on first base. And Lou Farrell, the batter, he is 0-1. for 1, Grounded into the 3-6-3 double play his first time up. Here's a look at other, day, other games scheduled for tonight. Keene at Concord. River Point at Manchester. Sanford at Mill City, and Team USA playing Newport. That's the final game of the season for Team USA. All 7 p.m. starts. And ball one high to Lou Farrell. Counts one ball and no strikes. The Team USA has kind of ripped the ward through the NECBL. They have yet to lose a game. Newport has the lone opportunity to try to beat them as they have ripped ward through and beaten everyone. There's a fastball line drive into center field, and it will fall in for a single, holding at second base in his Cloninger, and a single for Lou Farrell as he lines a single into center field.
Runners now first and second with two down, and now bring up the nine hitter in the lineup, Blake Rutkowski. One for one in the ball game with a beautiful bunt single down the third base line that just trickled ever so far down the line right on the chalk. And Butt was erased on the batter's interference play in the last inning. First and second, two down. That was a fantastic bunt right down the third base line. Like I said, when the drag bunt, it either looks really good or you look really stupid doing it. And he looked really good on the first time doing it. Not that you look bad when you don't do it, but you kind of wish you maybe swung after you made the out once you drag bunt. Fake pick off to throw to second base. Nobody even close, so he just holds on to the ball. And he'll throw the rubber up again. Blake Rutowski back in the box. Blake is a right-handed hitter. Twister center fielder tonight. And first and second, two down. And the first pitch to Rutowski is a curveball blocked nicely by Greco in the dirt. Counts one ball, no strikes. Torrington, tri- Torrington leading in the ball game, two to nothing. Torrington has eight hits in the ball game and just two runs to show for it thus far. Blake Rutowski with an RBI opportunity here with two down. 1-0 pitch on the way as Allen stays from the stretch and a fastball blown right by Blit- Rutowski as he just got a piece of it. And the count's one ball and one strike. Well, with the runner on second base, Haas good in center field playing a little bit shallow. As they don't respect the power for Torrington. They played their outfielders in quite a bit this game. The 1-1 pitch slider swung on down the right field line and slicing foul out of play. And the count now one ball and two strikes as Blake Ratowski did a good job of trying to hit that slider. You want to take that breaking pitch the other way. You want to try to go to right field if you're a right-handed hitter, and you want to try to go left field with it if you're a left-handed hitter. He did just that, but a little late on it, and sends it foul down the right field line. Counts now one ball, two strikes, two outs. Runners on first and second. Nick Allen to the stretch and the one-two delivery on the way. Fastball back to the box. And easy play for Allen as he steps and throws the first in time. And the side is retired. No runs, two hits, no errors, and two runners left on base for the Twisters here in the top of the fourth. We go to the bottom of the fourth at Palmer Field. Twisters lead two to nothing. Twisters baseball is brought to you on WAPJ with underwriting by Jim Pescator. If you own your own home or business, you may need a remodeling job or an addition one of these days. And Jim Pescator can do it all. The phone number is 482-3543. That's 482-3543. By Klebe Fuel Company with 24-hour customer service, budget plans, service contracts, and automatic delivery, as well as new heating and cooling equipment. Klebe Fuel Company, 738-1114. That's 738-1114. Also by Domino's Pizza, with two convenient locations, 343 Winston Road in Torrington, and the Ames Plaza, Route 44 in Winston. Domino's also has subs and buffalo wings, as well as many varieties of pizza. For delivery, the number in Torrington is 496-9912, and in Winston, 738-3030. Domino's Pizza in Torrington and Winston, both locally owned and operated. So Jason Jones back on the mound. This is the bottom of the fourth inning. Just one hit given up in the game. The Twisters have a 2-0 lead here in the game from Middletown over the Giants. And your three scheduled hitters for the Middletown Giants in the bottom of the fourth. Lance Koning, Josh Beauregard, and Tim D'Aquila. Your 2-3-4 and four for the Middletown Giants as they will get ready to face Jason Jones, who's pitching a one-hitter through the ball game. And... It's kind of funny, the uh, Middletown Giant mascot has a big old squirt gun. And he went up and stuck up behind the umpire and squirted him right in the face. <laughs> sure, that will get some home calls for you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's the way to do it. Take, take a squirt gun from the uh, mascot and uh, shoot the umpire in the face. I'm sure that you'll get that safe call when you really need it. Four walks, 35 strikeout ratio. That's a one to nine ratio, and that's just outstanding. As Jones calls, as his timeout called at the plate, counts three balls, two strikes, one out, nobody on. Bottom of the fourth, Twisters lead two to nothing. Twisters have two runs on eight hits, and the three-two pitch on the way. Curveball line drive down the right field line, and it curls foul out of play. 
Count remains three balls and two strikes, and that will break the bat of Beauregard. He'll get new lumber, and we'll redo the 3-2 pitch in just a moment. Well, that is true about that walks to strikeouts ratio. I mean, a lot of pitchers have almost 50-50, almost the same amount of strikeouts as walks, and that drives a manager crazy. Yeah, you really want to try to get that ratio at least 2-1, to one, preferably 3-1. to one. For every walk you give up, you want to have at least two to three strikeouts per walk. Jason Jones has a ridiculous almost 9-1 to one ratio which is something on, that as a younger pitcher you don't see very often. Basically, he doesn't walk anybody. He's just very around the plate. 3-2 pitch, fastball, line drive down the left field line. It's slicing and foul out of play. So Bogart has tried to shoot the right side. Now he tries to shoot the left side. Both attempts come up empty as they're both foul balls. And we'll do the 3-2 once again. As this will be the eighth pitch of the at-bat for, Jason, I'm sorry, for Josh Bogart. Jason Jones looks in for the sign, shakes off the first sign, and will reset himself as him and Cloninger cannot get together on the sign. Jones back on the rubber and looks in and now delivers a 3-2 pitch. Curveball swung on and missed as he gets him way out in front of it. And there's now two down here in the bottom of the fourth. The fourth strikeout of the inning for Jason Jones. And two in a row here in the fourth. And uh, that was a... Struggling at bat by Beauregard. Nice at bat by him trying to chisel away, but then nothing but a big swing and a strikeout in the end. Yeah, Jason Jones with a 3 2 nasty deuce right there. Just two, that's, just, that's just not fair. And now the batter, Tim Dequila, to the plate. He's 0 for 1. He flew out to Rotowski in the second inning. Right handed batter in the first pitch. Curveball called strike one on the inside part of the plate. Counts no balls and one strike. Jones showing an excellent deuce tonight. And a good lively fastball, and he's in control of the plate as his location has been absolutely beautiful. 0-1 pitch, fastball, a little low, and the count now evens off one ball, one strike. Jones has been very impressive on the year, and unfortunately his record does not really reflect that. Pitch in the dirt, blocked, and ball two as it's low and outside. Two balls and one strike. It's a shame to see Jason Jones' one win, two loss record because he's pitched just outstanding all year. He's got an ERA of 2.20 on the season. And then a little bit of uh, some shoddy defense behind him and lack of run support. 2-1 pitch, down low, misses, and count 3-1. and one. Well, like I've been saying, uh, you know, the, the Twisters' bats have been sporadic throughout the season and probably falls coincidentally on the nights that Jones pitching that they're not alive. True. Jones has not really had much run support, and it seems like every big error made in the game happens to be when he's pitching. It's a fastball. He just challenged him with a fastball, and... Daquilo was just way late and goes down the right field line out of play. And they count now three balls and two strikes. So Jones with back-to-back full counts on batters. You don't see that very often. And a 3-2 pitch on the way to Daquila. Daquila is playing left field for the Giants tonight. Daquila shares the uh, Giants team lead with Beauregard and hits with 22 each. There's a ground ball back to the box. Jones kind of off balance, fields it, and flips the first base in time. Side retired. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base for the Giants in the fourth. We go to the top of the fifth with your Twisters leading two to nothing. Twisters baseball on WAPJ is brought to you with underwriting by Torrington Hyundai Isuzu, 1446 East Main Street in Torrington. Locally owned and operated by the Alfano family for over 60 years. Torrington features a huge summer clearance of the 2002 Hyundai Elantra, Sonata, Accent, XG350, or their SUV, the Hyundai Santa Fe. All of these with a 10-year Hyundai Advantage warranty. Torrington Hyundai, where driving is believing. Side-by-side at 1446 East Main Street is Torrington Isuzu, with a 10-year, 120,000-mile guarantee. Torrington Hyundai and Isuzu, 1446 East Main Street, Torrington. And by the Northwest Hills Credit Union, located at 339 North Elm Street in Torrington. Serving the financial needs of those living, working, worshiping, or attending school in Torrington, as well as the Northwest Connecticut Chamber of Commerce. And by First Assembly of God, home of the Torrington Christian Academy, for students kindergarten through the 12th grade and Kitty College Nursery School for three- and four-year-olds. First Assembly of God, 387 New Harrington Road, Torrington, also has a vacation Bible school. The phone number is 482-7464. Schedule three hitters for the Twisters in the top of the fifth inning. The top of the order, your one, two, and three, John Cronin, Wick Udy, and Mike Sokol. 
I'll turn play by play over to Jeremy Paluccio here in the top of the fifth with your Twisters leading two to nothing. Yeah, thanks, Jeff. As uh, John Cronin steps in, the Twister second baseman tonight, he's uh, 0 for 2. He struck out twice in the game. Wick Udy's on deck. Nick Allen on the mound for the Giants. He sets the kick, and the pitch is up and in a little bit. Fastball for ball one taken by Cronin. And Cronin, his occasional speed. He can drop the bunt every now and then. As Allen kicks, delivers. Pitch is off speed. Drops low and away for ball two on John Cronin. 2-0 the count. Cronin steps back in there. Allen ready again, and the 2 nothing pitch is strike one right down the middle, lower portion of the strike zone. Two ball, one strike count on John Cronin. And the catcher is Greco. Allen looks in for the signs from him. He sets, rocks, kicks, delivers, bounces off home plate, gets past the catcher. Home plate umpire gives him a new ball. That's taken for ball three. Little ball that bounced behind home plate. So, Nick Allen looks in for the sign. He sets, and the 3-1 pitch is swung on and missed for strike two. Count goes full now on John Cronin. And Cronin was part of that interference play in his last at-bat. The throw down to second base, and then Rutkowski was called out on the play, unfortunately. The payoff pitch from Allen is taken high for ball four. So Cronin, a leadoff walk here in the fifth. That is the first walk of the ball game for Nick Allen as he has been around the play most of the ball game and has yet to allow a walk until now as John Cronin trots the first base. So Cronin down on first with nobody out, and that'll bring up Wick Udy, the designated hitter tonight. Wick Udy has crossed the plate twice to both the runs of the Twisters in this game, and Wick Udy scoring. The first pitch to him from Allen is a fastball taken, called strike one. He is two for two, single twice, and came around to score, as I said. Left-hand hitter, Cronin takes his lead from first. Fur- turns and throws down. Back safely is Cronin, head first slide. Allen ready again. He sets, long look in for the sign. He kicks, delivers. Pitch is taken low. The throw down to second. Cronin took off, and he's out at second base. Uh, Greco's throw down there nips Cronin, Cronin trying to steal second base. That was a close play, though. Cronin had a nice uh, break from first, but nice throw right on the money there from the catcher Greco. That was a throw. That was a good throw right there by the catcher Greco. Cronin had that base stolen, but the beautiful throw by the catcher right on the right in the bag makes the play. Counts one and one on Udy. Allen kicks, delivers, pitches taken low for ball two, two and one. Actually, I have to correct myself. That's a two base error that Udy got on back in the first. I have a single and an error. That's a two base error. Scored twice in the game. The pitch is taken outside. No, outside corner strike on Udy. Count goes two and two with one out. So natural with Wick Udy's great eye that when they don't, when he doesn't swing, you expect it to be called the ball. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. The two-two delivery from Nick Allen is taken inside and low for ball three. Count goes full now on Wick Udy. Mike Sokol's on deck. Again, we're in the top of the fifth. Two nothing score. The Twisters with the lead here. The Middletown Giants. Nick Allen looks in. He sets the kick and the pitch is a hard hit ground ball. The first baseman, Walter, picks it up and he takes it himself for the second out of the game. Inning. Unassisted out to number three position. So that'll bring up Mike Sokol, the twister first baseman. He's one for two, a single in the third. Slide out to center in the first. Sokol's a right-hand hitter. Came into the game with 18 hits, five doubles. Nick Allen's first pitch is taken low in the dirt for ball one. And Sokol has one of those cherry red bats that we've seen. They're pretty rare, but the pitch is taken inside and low for ball two. Two and oh now. Jeff Horgan on deck. Middle infielder's playing back right on the edge of the outfield grass. And the pitch is taken low for ball three. All low pitches from uh, Nick Allen. 
Low pitches over the plate and one low inside pitch to Sokol. And the three nothing pitch is taken for strike one. High enough to be a strike this time. Three ball, one strike count on Sokol. Steps out and adjusts his batting gloves and he's ready. Infield or outfielders playing in relatively normal positions, maybe slightly shallow. The three one pitch is popped up. Shallow center coming in is Hosgood. And he goes over to his right a little bit and makes the catch. Route number three here in the top of the fifth. A one two three inning. And the score remains two to nothing. The Twisters with the lead from Middletown. Twisters Baseball and WAPJ is brought to you with underwriting by the Torrington Lumber Company, featuring Peachtree Doors and Windows. The new Port 2 entry door from Peachtree offers the beauty and rich design of a wooden door, but it has the energy efficiency and durability of a fiberglass door. New Port 2 adds timeless elegance to a home, whether it's traditional, contemporary, colonial ranch, or Victorian, and there's an amazing array of glass design options. Torrington Lumber Company, 281 Church Street, Torrington, the home of Peachtree Doors and Windows, the perfect combination of beauty and design. And by Sports Palace, 25 Pine Ridge Road, Torrington, the official outfitters of the Torrington Twisters. Sports Palace has Twister t-shirts, player hats, fan hats, pennants, seat cushions, bumper stickers, and more. Sports Palace, 25 Pine Ridge Road, Torrington, the longest continuous sporting goods store in the northwest corner. Well, Jason Jones for the Twisters tonight, pitching quite a game. No runs and one hit for the Middletown Giants as we go into the bottom of the fifth inning. Nice outing for Jason Jones. He'll be facing Ron Acabo, Justin Walters, and Josh Greco, the fifth, sixth, and seventh hitters, the scheduled three here in the fifth inning for the Giants. And now we're ready. The home plate umpire dusting off home plate, and we're all set as Acabo steps up to the plate. He is the third baseman. He's 0 for 1. Grounded out the first base in his first at bat. He's a left-hand hitter, digs in. Akabo comes in at 236 with 17 hits going into the game. Jones kicks, delivers, a hit in the air to left field. Going down, going to his right is Horgan, and he makes the catch in the corner. One down. That's efficiency for you. One pitch, one out. Justin Walters, the first baseman, steps up. He's 0 for 1, and he struck out his first time up. Yeah, Walters, the first baseman. Walters comes in at 267. He has 12 hits. The right-hand batter steps in there. Jason Jones on the mound looks in for the signs from Kloniger. The kick and the first pitch to him. The line drive into left field, and Horgan, almost right at the right spot, comes in about three steps, and he makes the catch for out number two. That's a big break for Jason Jones right there as... That was a hanging deuce. It sat right over the plate. Jones lucky to keep that ball in the park. As Justin Walters tattooed it, but it was right at Horgan. And now two pitches and two down here in the top, I'm sorry, bottom of the fifth. That'll bring up Josh Greco, the Giants catcher. He's one for one, a single in the third. And after pitching two pitches and getting two outs, Josh Greco should have the take sign here. And Jason Jones should know that and throw a pitch right down the middle because he should not be swinging at this pitch. And Jones' first offering to him is taken low for a ball one. Bounces in front of the catcher, Kloniger, off his shin guard. And Jason Jones ready again. He sets the kick, and the one nothing pitch is a hard hit bouncer to show a little. Oh, they both collide there, uh, Farrell and Eatry. And the ball goes into shallow left field. Greco on first. Kind of a tough play. The third baseman's job on that is to cut that ball off before the shortstop. He tried to do it. Lou Farrell had a chance to make the play because the tree, E tree couldn't get it. And the ball really took a nasty hop off this awful gravel on the infield and went over Farrell's head. And a base hit in the left center on the ground ball. Jason Jones not pleased on the mound. Not mad at his players, just mad that that ball took that hop. It doesn't take that hop. Farrell still makes that play. Even though the two two players collided, he still would have easily made that play. Right, that was they collided after he would have made right. the play. Rob Hosgood, the batter. The first pitch to him is low in the dirt. Nice block by Kloniger. Keeping it down there in the dirt. Ball one. So Greco down at first base, his second single of the night. And Hosgood, a left-hand hitter. 0 for 1. Flight out the left field earlier in the game. Swung and fouled. First base side. Counts 1 and 1 on him. 
Phil Rothkugel is on deck. Yeah, Hosgood steps out, and now he digs back into the batter's box. Yeah, runner takes his lead from first. The pitch is off speed, taken high and outside a little bit for ball two, two and one. That was a funny-looking pitch from Jones compared to most of his pitches. Your ball broke a lot, but just stayed up in the strike zone and right. just couldn't, just didn't quite snap it off enough. And counts two and one. Two one pitch from Jones is check swing fouled. I think off his lower foot, lower portion of his leg or his foot foul on the third base side. Too bad it was off his foot because boy, if that was a bunt, it would have been a beautiful bunt as it trickled up the third base line. At first, I didn't see it hit the batter's leg, and I thought for sure that that was just trouble as it actually hit the bag at third base. That's a fair ball if it doesn't hit off his leg and the and a break for Torrington. As if that ball is swung and hits the bag, it's a fair ball, and that would have been a single all the way. So Jones looking in for the sign from Kloniger, and the 2-2 delivery is low outside, bounces away from Kloniger, and going down to second base is Greco on a pass ball. And now, more importantly, we have a 3-2 pitch on the way. Runner's now in scoring position, so a single will score the runner Greco. And if he was on first, a single would not score, most likely. So a tough break for Jones to try to work out of it. The payoff pitch is swung on foul, straight back behind home plate. Oh, so we have two outs here. Twister's up two to nothing. Count is full on Hosgood, a runner down to second base, Greco. I can see why Hosgood hits 211 with two homers and 12 RBIs on the 3-2 pitch right there. He wasn't trying to put that ball on the play. He was swinging for the fences on 3-2. That would explain the low batting average with the sign of pop that he has in his, in his stats. The pitch swung on and missed for strike three. And a low and away pitch, a big, a little bit of a threat there with the runner going down to second base. But at the end of five complete innings, 2-0 to score. The Twisters with the lead over the Giants from Middletown. With East Torrington Furniture, 104 Main Street in downtown Torrington, now in their 74th year, featuring three floors of fine furniture, country, traditional, and contemporary. That's Libby's Torrington Furniture, 104 Main Street, downtown Torrington. By Arrow Prescription Center, 26 McDermott Avenue, Torrington, where blood pressure and cholesterol checks and diabetic screenings are a regular occurrence three times a week. That's at Arrow Prescription Center, 26 McDermott Avenue, in Torrington. Also by Coffee House Plus, with locations throughout Torrington and beyond. They don't just have coffee and other beverages, but baker aims, including fresh donuts and real New York bagels. Serving baked goods and best eaten coffee, Coffee House Plus has locations in Torrington at 469 East Main Street, 242 South Main Street, and 19 McDermott Avenue, as well as, co- as, well as Coffee House Plus stores in Bantam, Burlington, Thomaston, and New Milford. That's Coffee House Plus. Well, the top of the sixth, Jeff Horgan, Lee Lipschutz, and Eric Kloniger, the scheduled three for the Twisters. Fourth, fifth, and sixth batters, the middle of the order. Nick Allen on the mound for the Middletown Giants. And Greg Hunt, the manager, is talking to the home plate umpire. I'm not sure what about. A lot of interesting calls as of late. Last couple of nights, they had to come out twice in one inning last night. Very uh, emotional inning as Jeff Horgan, the left fielder, is coming to the plate now. And two to nothing the score. The Twisters, two runs on eight hits. The Middletown Giants, no runs on two hits. Both teams have committed an error in the ball game. Horgan's one for two. He singled in the first and then grounded out, or was caught off base, actually, in a rundown. Jeff Horgan, though, really the story of the ball game to go along with Jason Jones. He's two for two in the ball game with two RBIs. Torrington has two runs in the ball game. Allen kicks, delivers. Fastball outside corner, taken strike one. And both those hits that Horgan has in the game came with two outs. So two clutch hits for Jeff Horgan, and he's the difference of the ball game. The 0 1 pitch from Allen is a line drive right at second baseman Koenig going to his left. About five steps. Nice shot by Horgan, but right at. Koenig. So that's a boy that's swinging a good bat. Two for three in the ball game, and every ball he's hit has been hard. Even some of the foul balls he hit were hard. That was slammed to second base. Now bring up Lee Lipschutz with one out here in the sixth. He's the right fielder. Allen kicks, delivers. Roller near first base. Walters underhand flip to Allen covering first, and they got him for out number two. Just a slow little dribbler. Kind of died as soon as it hit the grass. What a play by the first baseman Walters. He flipped that ball, not with his bare hand, but with his glove. 
He took the ball from his glove and flipped it with the glove. He really didn't have the time for the exchange as Lipschitz was cruising down the line. But three pitches and two outs and an efficient moving game thus far with two down for Eric Cloninger. Cloninger is the catcher tonight. First full game behind the plate for the Twisters. He is one for two. He had a single on the fourth after grounding out in the second. He's a right-hand batter. Allen kicks, delivers, and pitches. Popped foul over the grandstand roof behind home plate. 0-1 is the count with two out. And Cloninger had one hit earlier in the game. Steps back in there. Nick Allen on the mound looking in for the signs from Greco. The catcher, he sets the kick and the 0-1 pitch is swung foul off the screen above the uh, first base side on deck area. See Cloninger from Liberty University. Rob Eatry's on deck. Nick Allen sets the kick and the 0-2 delivery hits. Cloninger in the arm or the elbow area of his arm. He looks like he's in pain walking down to first base. That was a little scary. That 0-2 pitch was up by his face. He put his left elbow up to block his face, and it hit the elbow, and Coach Hunt out to check on him. As Coach Roy at first base. He's walking it off. He's just mis- miserably walking down first base. I heard the gentleman next to us call, and he slams his hat down. He's definitely in pain. He's trying. Looks like It looks like it got him on the forearm, actually as the Middletown trainer will come out and look at him as well, making sure that he is okay. As two outs, one thing that Nick Allen right there is trying not to do is hit Con. It's not intentional by any means. An 0-2 pitch, just a fastball. He tried to bear inside on him, up and in, and he just got away from him, and it was headed towards Cloninger's head. He kind of put his arm up and fell to the ground, and it hit off the arm, popped right back up quickly, and walked down to first base, and they're just making sure he's okay. It is a common thing when something's coming at your head to stick the arm or the elbow up in the way to try to stop it as you're turning away, which uh, Kloniger was about to do. And he's definitely frustrated by this hit by the pitch, and he was walking it off down there. A lot of attention to that elbow. Yeah, you de- One thing you definitely want to do, though, is you want to protect your face, obviously. You don't want to get hit in the face. I mean, that's just common sense, as you don't want to get hit anywhere above the shoulder area, mm-hmm. neck included. And he will be all right at first base as he will stay in the game as he waves off the trainer and says, I'm okay. And Torrington with two outs and a runner on first now as Rob Eatry to the plate, one for two in the game. Well, a fairly quiet crowd here at Middletown. Nice park down here. Uh, more people on the third base side stands than on the first base side. A fairly sparse crowd. There's actually a little picnic area down the left field line that has a lot of people sitting at it. In fact, a lot of the scouts, it looks like, are sitting over there, to be honest with you, with a picnic area where you can actually eat. And there's people down there as well. First pitch to Rob Eatry is taken in for strike one, lower portion of the strike zone. They're the best hot dogs here that I've had in the league so far. Eatry is a left-hand batter. The pitch to him is swung and foul, third base side. Down in the corner, out of play. Counts 0-2 on Eatry with two out. Runner on first, Cloninger. Still looking at his arm a little bit, but it's takes his lead from first. The 0-2 pitch to Eatry is swung, a line drive. Left center, falling in for a base hit for Eatry. Quick throw back to second base. Eatry's back there on the back. So, oh, trying to catch him off second base there. So runners on first and second for the Twisters here with two outs in the sixth. Yeah, an 0-2 pitch by uh, Nick Allen that got way too much of the plate. And Eatry did the smart thing, deposited it in left center field for a single, and he's two for three in the ball game. He really is swinging a hot bat, too. And there's now first and second, two down. Eatry had a single earlier in the game, and that'll bring up Lou Farrell, the twister shortstop. He had a single in his last at bat in the fourth. He's one for two. Left-hand hitter, Nick Allen, looks back to second. The kick and the pitch is inside. Farrell backs off a little bit. Ball one. So Nick Allen, some poor pitching in this inning, an 0-2 count to Cloninger, and he hit him, and now an 0-2 pitch to Eatry, and he gives up a single. Continuously ahead of the count, but still giving up base runners. Runners take their lead. The pitch is almost like the previous one inside, and backs Farrell off a little bit for ball two. A little bit low and inside. The runners take their leads from first and second. A little bit of action stirring down there in the bullpen for the Middletown Giants. Allen sets the kick, and the pitch is swung foul. Third base side going out of play. 
Count is two balls and one strike on Lou Farrell with two out. Twister scored two runs in the game, one in the first and one in the third. No other runs scored for them and no runs at all scored for the Giants in the game. Two nothing to score. Twister's with the lead. And Etri and Kloniger take their lead from first and second. Allen sets the kick and the pitch swung and hit in the air to center field. Coming in, Hosgood coming in and makes the catch for out number three. Fly ball to center field. Two runners left on, though. But at the end of five and a half innings, the Twisters with the lead. Two to nothing from Middletown over the Giants. Torrington Twisters on WAPJ is brought to you with underwriting by the Northwest YMCA. They have two locations, one on Prospect Street in Torrington, the other on Main Street in Winstead. And again this year, the YMCA is providing complimentary workouts for your Twisters players. That's the Northwest YMCA. By Thoreau and Noel, handling professional service needs, the two important names to remember are Thoreau and Noel. Their website is taxnag.com. Also by Carbone's Market, 221 Oak Avenue, Torrington. They have the famous grinder that's a meal in itself. And Carbone's also features hot foods and salads. That's Carbone's Market, 489-8164. And by Albreda Waste LLC in Torrington. Owned and operated by Robert Albreda, a trusted name in waste removal for over 30 years. Industrial, residential, commercial, whatever your needs, Robert Albreda and his staff can handle it for you. The number is 482-9444. Well, I see Greg Hunt uh, out there with the lineup card talking to the home plate umpire. Maybe there's going to be a change. I'm guessing it's going to be a catching change because also Tyler Dabo has gone out to take a couple of warm-up tosses with Jones. I think there's going to be a new catcher, maybe for Kloniger. Well, it's interesting here because if Wick Udy were to go into the catcher position, I'm not sure what the ruling is, is I do believe that they would lose their DH and the pitcher would have to hit because once you take your DH out of the DH spot and put a position play and move him to a position, I'm not sure the ruling, and I really wish I knew this. I do believe you lose your DH. All right. And what would happen if Rick Udy comes in and catches, he would have to. That's the, that's the bad thing about putting one of your catchers as a DH because now if Rick Udy were to come in the game, he loses that. He loses his catcher. He loses the DH, I'm sorry. But it looks like it's going to be Rick Udy. So Rick Udy is going to catch now, and I'm assuming – that the pitcher will move into Klonginger's spot. So Jason Jones, I do believe, would have to hit in the number six hole. And I will check on that for you in just a minute as I ask somebody that would know. That'll be interesting to see. <laughs> and uh, so Wick Udy is behind the plate now. Again, we're in the bottom of the sixth inning. Uh, Phil Ruth C- Rothkugel, Anthony Aquilino, and Lance Koenig are the scheduled three for the Middletown Giants. I just checked with the official score, and I do believe that that is the ruling. What's going to happen here, since we, you know, you have your catcher in the DH position, nothing Greg Hunt could do. He can't foresee an injury. But Wick Udy now catching. He'll remain in the two-hole as a catcher, but batting in the six-hole, as I talked to the official scorekeeper to my right, we do believe that the pitcher, Jason Jones, will now have to bat in the six-hole. And Jason Jones does not swing the bat very often. It'll be interesting to see if he comes up in a key situation in the seventh or eighth inning with the Twisters with a chance to score some runs, what they'll do because he's pitching an outstanding ball game. Well, Phil Roth Kugel, the batter. The first pitch from Jones is swung on and missed for strike one. Slightly high pitch, a hard swing by Roth Kugel. Kugel's the designated hitter. He's 0 for 1 a strikeout. That's left handed. Jones, the kick and the pitch is check swing. They go down to the first base umpire and they got him. Strike two. So Jones looking in. Pitching quite a game tonight again. And the 0-2 pitch is swung on and missed for strike three. Lead off strike out here in the bottom of the sixth. Jones uh, pitching well in the game. It's his second time he struck out Rock Google in the game. He has one, two, three, five strikeouts in the game. Just one hit given up, two hits given up in the game. That'll bring up Anthony Aquilino, the giant shortstop. He's 0 for 2, two ground outs. Right-hand hitter, Jones rocks, kicks, and deals. Pitch is taken, fastball, strike one on Aquilino. Aquilino from Lemoyne College. 
from Pine Hill, New Jersey. Steps back in there, right-hand hitter. Jones looking in for the signs from Udy now, the catcher. The kick and the pitch is swung, foul. A little roller right to the right of the home plate. Udy trots over to pick it up, quarter of the way down the first baseline. And the umpire throws out a new ball for Jones. Outfielders are playing fairly deep, slightly beyond regular conditions. Middle infielders playing deep. Kronig, uh, Cronin, heels are on the grass, edge of the grass, right behind him. The 0-2 pitch is swung, a bouncer foul. Third base side going down the corner there. Lance Koenig on deck. And Aquilino back in there. Jones on the mound ready, looks in for the sign. He sets, and the 0-2 pitch is swung, bounce foul, almost identical to the previous pitch. Count remains 0-2. Aquilino. Comes in at 241. He had 21 hits on the season going into the game. Just behind the league leaders of the Giants with 22 each. Nothing in two count. Time's called as Aquilino steps out of the box. And now he's ready again. Jones. 0-2 delivery is swung. Bouncer foul. First base side, a little roller halfway down the line in front of the dugout. Dabo comes out of the dugout and tosses the ball back to the home plate umpire. And we're ready again. The count still 0-2 on Aquilino. Fouled again. Bounced off of him. Off the ankle. Aquilino uh, walking around, walking it off. This is a really unbelievable bat. There's been six pitches in in the uh, bat and yet to see a ball. As the first two pitches being 0-2, you think that Jones would want to waste one. Well, he has tried in the last four pitches. But Aquilino is just absolutely a free swinger, to say the least, and is just swinging at everything, and he's getting pieces of this and pieces of that just staying alive. And Jones is going to probably go on 0-2 here with something way out of the strike zone see if he can get Aquilino to swing. Yeah, it's been 0-2 for a while. Aquilino just chipping away and chipping away. And the 0-2 pitch from Jones has popped up first base side. Sokol going back, Cronin coming over, Sokol calling everybody off, and he makes the catch about five feet in foul territory. Down the line there, out number two. And the battle won by Jones as he continually fed him on 0-2, trying to get him to do something with the ball besides foul it off. He came at him with a curveball, and Aquilino popped it up, and there's now two down here in the bottom of the six. That'll bring up Lance Koenig, the second baseman. He struck out in his last at bat in the fourth inning. Drew a walk back in the first. Was thrown out trying to steal home. Or not steal home, but on his way to home plate, the throw in got him. And the first pitch to him from Jones is taken strike one. Curveball. Dropped into the lower portion of the strike zone. Strike one. And the 0-1 pitch is almost exactly the same. Fastball, though. Strike two. That play when Koning got thrown out when he tried to tag it up back in the first looks even bigger now with the score being just two to nothing. The 0-2 pitch is low outside for ball one. One ball, two strike count with two outs on Lance Koning. Beauregard is on deck. Well, Jones has two outs here. The one-two delivery is a chop foul. A little piece of it by Koning. Right, rolled right behind home plate there. One and two, the count remains. We're in the bottom of the sixth. The Koenig came in with 240 average. He had 18 hits. Pitch is swung into right field, coming over near the line, and making the catch is lip shuts. About 10 feet from the foul line in the corner. Side is retired. One, two, three inning. Long at bat by Aquilino. And at the end of six full innings, two to nothing the score. The Twisters with the lead over the Middletown Giants. Twisters baseball is brought to you with underwriting by the Torrington Hyundai Isuzu, 1446 East Main Street in Torrington. Locally owned and operated by the Alfano family for over 60 years. Torrington features a huge summer clearance of the 2002 Hyundai Elantra, the Sonata, the Accent, the XG350, or their SUV, the Hyundai Santa Fe. 
All these with the 10-year Hyundai Advantage warranty. Torrington Hyundai, where driving is believing, side by side at 1446 East Main Street is Torrington Azuzu. With a 10-year, 120,000-mile guarantee, Torrington Hyundai and Azuzu, 1446 East Main Street in Torrington. And by Litco Supply and the bold look of Kohler at 261 Oak Avenue in Torrington, they have courteous expert staff ready to help with every plumbing, heating, air conditioning, and water treatment needed. Litco Supply has been providing quality service for over 50 years. Their hours are Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., and Saturdays from 8 a.m. to noon. The Litco Supply showroom has the Kohler 10-Jet Body Spa. That's Litco Supply, 261 Oak Avenue in Torrington. The number is 489-4179 or on the web at litcosupply.com. Well, the Middletown Giants have a new pitcher warming up. His name is Pat Hackey. He is a right-hand pitcher. Hackey, rather. He's from Troy State University, from Fairfax, Vermont. Tall right-hander. Pat Hakey. He'll be facing Blake Rutkowski, John Cronin, and Wick Udy here in the top of the seventh. And back with the play-by-play, here's Jesse Doyer. And Torrington leading 2-0, two, to two runs, nine hits, one error for the Twisters. No runs, two hits, and one error for the Giants. And that will do the line on Mr. Nick Allen, who is the starter for Middletown. He went... Six innings in the ball game allowed nine hits, two runs, one of them earned, one walk, four strikeouts, and he is on the losing end of the battle as he cannot get the win. It'll be either a loss or a no decision for him. And number 28 comes into the ball game, and that is Patrick Hakey. And Patrick Hakey, in his sixth appearance of the year, he's pitched nine and two-thirds innings of no-run baseball on the season as he has an ERA of 0.00, does not have a decision. He's allowed seven hits in those nine and two-thirds innings, but interesting enough, has allowed seven walks in nine and two-thirds innings and has struck out nine. And there's another one of those pitchers with almost a one-to-one ratio with walk strikeouts, which makes Jason Jones' stats even more remarkable in the fact that he now has struck out 38 men on the year and allowed four walks. Jason Jones is just an outstanding walk-strikeout ratio for the Twisters. And Rutowski, one for two in the ball game, steps in. The right-handed hitter takes ball one down and low outside. Counts one and oh. Blake Rutowski had a beautiful drag bunt back in the third, right on the chalk on the third base line, then grounded back to the box, back to the pitcher in the fourth. One ball, no strike count. And the fastball swung on and lined foul. Counts one ball and one strike as Rutowski very late on that fastball as Patrick Hakey Throws the ball very hard, but something to keep an eye on is his walks. I mean, control might be an issue. Seven walks in nine and two-thirds innings. A lot of walks, almost one per inning. And the fastball challenged him, and he just blew it by him. Uh, swing and a miss. And the count now, one ball and two strikes to Blake Rutowski. Playing center field for the Twisters tonight and batting in the nine hole. John Cronin, who's playing second base tonight, awaits on deck. Hakey looks in for the sign. And the one-two delivery hit him as the curveball hung inside, and it hit Blake Rotowski. Blake will trot down to first base. He, unlike the catcher Cloninger, okay, as he is not in pain at all, and walks down to first base, and the leadoff man on here in the top of the seventh for the Twisters. Well, Rutkowski got hit at a nice soft spot, as opposed to uh, Cloninger back when he got hit. It was right in the elbow, probably the funny bone, and that's a hard pain to get rid of. And they took him out of the ball game, as you know. Wick Udy's now catching, and we talked about how in the sixth hole, the pitcher now has to bat, and it'll be interesting to see if we get down there with a chance to score some runs, what Coach Hunt's going to do. Hakey in the stretch delivers, and it's outside and low. Ball one, the count's one ball and no strikes to John Cronin. Cronin's 0 for 2 in the ball game with a walk, and it caught stealing as he walked in the fifth and was erased on the base pass as he was caught stealing. A good, strong throw by the catcher Greco. And Cronin back in the box, right-handed hitter, runner on first base. Rutowski stays put, and the fastball called strike one over the outside corner, and the count's one ball and one strike. Earlier in the game, back in the third, a very interesting play where Rutowski was on first base. He went to try to steal second. Cronin struck out swinging, leaned back over the plate after his follow-through, and the catcher tried to throw down to second, was blocked by Cronin, and was called batter's interference for the double play. 
Torrington would go on to get the next three hits. Runners in motion, and the catcher, Greco, can't get the handle, and Rutowski will steal second base, the stolen base, pitches the ball, and it counts now 2-1, and one. and a runner now in scoring position for the Twisters. Yeah, like we say, Cronin, uh, he can bunt. But uh, Rutkowski already down at second base. Interesting to see here if Cronin will actually be sacrificing here. Coach Hunt wondering, wondering here if Coach Hunt's going to put the sack bunt sign on to get the runner to third with less than two outs. 2-1 two, pitch, and no sign of bunt, and it's high ball, three. Three balls and one strike. So we discussed the situation when Patrick Hakey came in the game about his control. Now, he hasn't allowed an earned run in nine and two-thirds innings on the year, but seven walks in the nine and two-thirds is an awful lot of walks. He's hit the first batter, and now he's 3-1 on Cronin. And the 3-1 pitch, fastball swing and a miss. Strike two is a 3-1 fastball. You know Cronin's looking dead red, and he just challenged him and blew it right by him. Count now full. There's some hard swings by Conan. Or, I don't know why he's saying. I think it's a combination of Cronin and Conan. Conan. Cronin, uh, some hard cuts there from Cronin. Counts three balls and two strikes. Hakey back on the mound. The slanky right-hander looks the runner back at second. The runner takes off at third. Swing and a foul down the right field line. And out of play. The count remains three balls and two strikes. Rutowski would have easily stole third base on that as he got a huge jump. As Cronin, I don't know if definitely a hit and run, but I think what it is is Cronin on a 3-2 can't just let the pitch go by and be called strike three. He's got to protect. But the runner, Rutowski, was breaking towards third, and Rutowski would have easily stole third base. But Cronin has to defend the strike zone and fouled it off. We'll do the 3-2 all over again. Hakey with a longer look at second now, and the 3-2 pitch. Chop foul back out of play. The count remains three and two. Cronin with a nice at bat here. He's seven, seen seven pitches thus far. 2-0 lead. Twisters, two runs on nine hits in the ball game. They had one inning where they scored one run on four hits. So Torrington has hit the ball tonight. They just haven't quite pushed the runners across. He's taking two two-out singles by Jeff Horgan to push those runs across. 3-2 pitch on the way from Hakey. The runner takes off again. High pitch, fastball high, and there won't be a throw at third as Ratowski swipes third and on, on to first Cronin with the walk. And just as I said, Hickey's control an issue on the season, and sure enough, in this inning, it's caused him a few problems as he hits the first batter. Ortowski stole second, now steals third. Cronin walks, is now first and third, nobody out, and Wick Udy the batter. He's one for three officially in the ballgame with two runs scored. Well, Pat Hickey, some struggling in there on the mound in this inning. He's in a situation now with nobody out. And Wick Udy now doing the catching duty. As Cloninger hurt himself and taken out, Cronin breaks for second, and a foul ball as they had the hit and run on. A big jump by Cronin. I think Cronin would have easily stole that base as well as they're just getting huge jumps off of Hake. He's got a big high leg kick, and Torrington had noticed that right away, and they continue to just try to steal off bases off him as he has a big, slow delivery to the plate and definitely not helping the catcher out in any way possible. Udy tried to hit and run there, and the fouls it off, and the count's 0-1, Cronin back to first base, so still first and third. Wick Udy in the box, Hakey at the stretch, and delivers the 0-1, curveball swung on and missed. Nice deuce right there, and the count's now no balls and two strikes. You don't see Udy miss too many pitches. Counts no balls and two strikes. That's a rare count for Wick Udy. Absolutely. I can't remember the last time he was down 0-2 in the count. He's generally ahead in the count. He's got such a great eye at the plate. Kind of pressed into duty to have to swing at that first pitch on the hit and run. That might not have been a strike. 0-2 pitch, fouled off back into the chains. And the count's 0-2. As Wick Udy fights off a nasty slider right on the inside part of the plate. And the count remains 0-2. Torrington trail up in the game, I'm sorry. They're up in the game, 2 to nothing in the top of the seventh. Looking to add a few more runs. As first and third, nobody out. Two players in this game to keep a note of. Jason Jones, a two-hitter through six innings, and Jeff Horgan, two two-out singles to give Torrington the 2 nothing lead. Cronin on the run, and a ground ball to first base. And they got the runner at third hung up. As Udy will go to first base, Ratowski caught up on the, at third. And the runner on third, Blake Ratowski, retired 3-2. to two As they broke on contact, Cronin was running on the play, the ground ball to first base. Cronin goes to second on the play as a fielder's choice for Udy. Score it 3-2. The runner on third cut down at the plate. 
That's Blake Rutowski. Interesting call right there because Udy right there hits that ball, and you figure Rutowski would hold his ground, allow Cronin go to second. They just get the unassisted play at first, and he'd have second and third and one down. But Rutowski broke on the play. I don't know if that was designed or just bad base running. And now Mike Sokol to the plate, and he's one for three in the ball game. Singled back in the third. First pitch curve, ball outside missing, ball one. One ball and no strike count. Top of the seventh. Torrington has a chance to put some runs across the board. They had first and third, nobody out. Now they have first and second, one down. The runner at second, Cronin. The runner at first, Wick Udy. And Mike Sokol, the left-handed hitting first baseman, into the box. One ball and no strike pitch on the way from Hakey. It's low, it gets behind the catcher, and now the runners break. Throw down to third base, and he's safe under the tag. And that's a pass ball, I do believe, as the ball two, and a pass ball by Greco allows each runner to move up. Cronin got a late jump, and that play was very close at third base, just barely under the tag, and now second and third. So essentially what they would have had even if Wick Udy, even if they just took the ball to first base. That's a... Uh indecision running there because that's a funny little ball that went behind home plate and from the vantage point of the runner you can't really see how far away from the catcher that ball was really going. That's a really good point. He couldn't see it. He took off late. Hakey now in the full windup and he's down low with that. Ball three. No control problem. Still a problem for Patrick Hakey. I see he's yet allow a hit in the inning. He's hit a batter and walk the batter. It's second and third. Infield all the way in for the Middletown Giants. It was a count three balls and no strikes to Mike Sokol. Torrington with a chance to tack on some much-needed insurance runs. The 3-0 pitch misses low ball four, and Sokol walks. So two walks and a hit by batter in the ball in the inning as Hakey continues to get himself in trouble with the ability not to locate pitches as he's walked a lot of batters on the year in minimal number of innings. Now we'll bring up the so far... One of the heroes of the ball game, Jeff Horgan. He's two for three in the ball game. Two RBIs. The only two RBIs in the ball game for either team. Both came with two out singles. And now the base is loaded, full of twisters. There is only one down, and the infield at the corners are in, and the middle is back. And the first pitch called, strike one inside corner, nothing in one. Well, the play with Rutkowski at third is unfortunate, not only because he would have scored by now. He's the one out of the inning, but he stole two bases to get the third. And the sacks full. They choose to play the second shortstop back for the double play. First and third in at the corners. And Hakey delivers the 0-1. And it's a fastball right on the inside part of the play. He throws some gas out there. When he's around the play, he really throws that ball hard. And that's called strike two. Nothing in two to count. The only enemy Hakey has right now is himself as he continues to walk people in this game. And put the base runners on all three bases full without a hit in the inning. Hakey throws strikes out there, though. Boy, he's a big, slanky right-hander, and he really brings the ball to home plate. You know, six feet, seven inches tall. 0-2 pitch. Hakey in the, now in the stretch. As he's not in the full windup, he's changed and delivers the 0-2, and it's in the dirt blocked nicely by Greco. And it counts one ball and two strikes. Well, if there's ever a time for a big hit from Torrington, this is the time. They're trying to get themselves back to 500 in any CBL play. You're running out of time as we've got about two more weeks left in the season. And Torrington really needs to make their run at the top spot in the Western Division. This would be a good step in the right direction. The 1-2 pitch on the way. Chopper down to shortstop. Could be two. Shortstop flips the second. On to first. Not in time. The throw gets past the first baseman, Walters. One run will score. In now comes Udy to score the second run. As Torrington scores two on the play. Horgan out 6-4 to four in the fielder's choice. He'll get an RBI. He'll stay at first base. Then give a throwing error to the second baseman, Koning allowing Udy to score, and Torrington comes up with two runs on the RBI fielder's choice ground out and then throwing an error on top of it, and Torrington now leads 4 to nothing. That was a nice break there for the Twisters. Now it's 4 to nothing. they have the lead. Well, interesting call by the Giants. They elected to play back in the middle to try to turn two. I don't think even if the throw was on target at first base, they would have had him. I think Horgan would have beat that out anyway, but only one run would have scored. But by throwing the ball away into the dugout, that allows the second run to come across the plate, and a big error as the score is now 4 to nothing And two down, Horgan on first, and Lee Lip shuts the batter. He's 0 for 3 in the ball game. First pitch outside and low ball one. One ball, no strikes now to Lee Lip shuts, the right fielder for the Twisters, batting in the five hole tonight. Team leader in RBIs and runs. 12 runs and 9 RBIs. 
Oregon with a modest lead at first base, maybe about a step and a half at the most. Hakey in the stretch and delivers the 1-0. Inside almost hit him, and they count two balls and no strikes. So Torrington without even a hit in the inning. They've scored two runs, and we talked about, I talked about Hakey coming in, and his walk to inning pitch ratio was very high. And sure enough, two walks, a hit by pitch, and a fielder's choice, an error, throw all the good stuff in there, and Torrington has two runs in the inning. Runner on first, two down, the 2-0 pitch, swung on and missed. Lee Lipschutz comes up empty, and the count two balls and one strike now. As Torrington, two runs in the inning. They now lead 4 to nothing. They had two runs on, no, on nine hits coming into the inning. Now they have four runs on nine hits. And the 2-1 pitch, swung on and miss. Lip shuts behind on the fastball. As he throws the ball hard, the question whether or not is if he can get them around the plate. Count now two balls and two strikes. Two outs, two balls, two strikes. Number 23 up. If Lip shuts was number 22, he'd have twos all across the board. Runner on first, two down. Hickey in the stretch, the delivery. Slider blocked nicely by Greco outside and low. Ball three. Three balls and two strikes. And with the count three and two and two down, that will get Jeff Horgan moving from first base on the pitch. I'd be surprised why the first baseman's still holding him on. I do not know because he should play behind him because Horgan's on the move here with three, two, count, two down. And the pitch, Horgan takes off. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. And Lipschutz goes down on strikes. But Torrington scores two runs, no hits. There was one error in the inning, and one runner left on base. Six and a half complete here at Palmer Field in Middletown, Connecticut. The Torrington Twisters lead the Middletown Giants four to nothing. Twisters baseball action on WAPJ is brought to you with underwriting by Alfredo's Deli, 168 Water Street, Torrington. Featuring daily special, linguine with sun-dried tomato and basil pesto, stuffed shells, chicken marsala, penny alla vodka, and fettuccine Alfredo. Daily specials at Alfredo's, 168 Water Street, Torrington. By Connecticut Billiards and Cafe, 683 Winston Road, Torrington, where the emphasis is on fun. Great social gathering place. Connecticut Billiards and Cafe, 683 Winston Road, Torrington. And by Washworks, Laundromat and Cleaners, in the Torrington Plaza at 50 South Main Street. Washworks, wash, dry, and fold staff, in the downtown Torrington Plaza. And by with the Winston Super Saver, 372 Main Street, Winston. And the local IGA store with the personal touch. They're specialists in meats at the Winston Super Saver, 372 Main Street in Winston. Three scheduled hitters for the Middletown Giants in the bottom of the seventh inning. Josh Beauregard, Tim Dequila, and Ron Acabo. That is your three, four, and five in the Middletown Giant lineup. And they have combined to go 0 for 6 thus far in the ball game. Jason Jones has been just outstanding on the mound for the Twisters as he's pitching a two-hitter going into the bottom of the seventh inning. One of the hits, an infield hit, and the other hit was a bad hop single towards the shortstop, Lou Farrell. Other than that, Jason Jones has been unscathed. Jason Jason Jones. Jones. I'm sorry, Jason Jones walked one and struck out five thus far in the game. Sorry, Jim. That's okay. <laughs> well, Jones, I was going to say, pitching superb tonight. Quite a game. And Jason Jones, one thing about him, though, is I really like this game is his ability to just locate. He still does not walk batters. He's just incredible out there. He doesn't give in, and he still gets out. That's the key thing. Anybody can throw a fastball over the plate and watch it go over the fence for a home run and say, oh, I don't walk people. But he's not even giving up. I mean, he's only given up two hits in this game, which means on the year he's given up 21 hits in almost 34 innings. That's just an awesome ratio. First pitch to Josh Bogart, ball one. Jack knifed him off the plate. Counts one ball and no strikes. Ogard lined out to lip shuts in the first inning, and on the play, they doubled up Coning at home as he tried to tag up. 4-0 pitch popped up in the infield, an old-fashioned infield pop-up. Etree comes over to his left and makes the catch. Two pitches, one out, and that will bring up Tim Dequila. He's over two in the ball game. He flew out to Ratowski in center field his first time up and back to the box in the, in the fourth inning, 0-2 in the game. Well, back in the fifth inning, uh, as we said, uh, Jones got... Akabo and Walters both retired on one pitch, both fly balls out to left field. He's been, you know, coming into this inning, he, he's pitched into, this is the seventh inning of work now, he's pitched six complete, six and a third now, and his pitch count is not high at all. I have on the, on the game two, three, four full counts on any of the batters in the whole game, so his pitch count is very low. And the first pitch on the way, fastball outside misses, just off the black, and the count's one ball and no strike to Tim Dequila, left fielder for the Middletown Giants came into the game hitting 253. Has 14 RBIs on the year. And, a... and 
sorry about the feedback, and the count's one ball and one strike. Also, Shane Kelly had a nice outing back on Sunday, so some uh, bright spots here, some really nice things to see from the pitching staff. And Torrington trying to get themselves back to 500. The 1-1 pitch, fastball right down the middle, call strike two. Counts now one ball and two strikes to Tim Dequila, the left fielder for the Giants, as he has 14 RBIs in a year, hitting 253. Definitely a bright spot for the Giants, and that is a foul ball down the right field right, right field lines, and it slices foul out of play into the Torrington bullpen. The count remains one ball and two strikes. Tim Dequila back in the box. Jordan looks for the sign, and the one-two on the way. Fastball flare down to right field. To his left is Lee Lipschutz going to the line and makes the catch on a fine running catch by Lee Lipschutz. That was a line drive right down the line. Lipschutz kind of shaded him towards the line and reached out with the left, to his left with the glove and made the catch. Two down in the bottom of the seventh. Yeah, nice running catch by Lipschutz heading toward the line down there in the corner in right field. And now that will bring up Ronna Cabo. He is the third baseman for the, for the Giants. He's 0 for 2 in the ball game. Grounded out to the first baseman, Sokol in the second, and flew out to Horgan in the fifth. And it's kind of ironic that Cable's, this will be his third at bat, and he's seen just four pitches all night long. And uh, Cabo looks at the first pitch outside ball one as it doesn't quite come back over the plate. The counts one ball and no strikes. Jason Jones with two outs, nobody on here in the seventh. Pitches a fastball right down the middle, swinging a miss, and strike one. The count's now one ball and one strike. As Jones trying to keep Torrington in front as they lead four to nothing. They have nine hits in the game. Middletown just has two. One one pitch line drive to second base right at Cronin, and the side is retired. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left on base. Seven complete here at Palmer Field. Twisters lead four to nothing. Twisters Baseball on WAPJ is brought to you with underwriting by the Torrington Lumber Company, featuring Peachtree doors and windows. The new Port 2 entry door from Peachtree offers the beauty and rich design of a wooden door. Yet it has the energy efficiency and durability of a fiberglass door. Newport 2 adds timeless elegance to a home, whether it's traditional, contemporary, colonial, ranch, or Victorian. And there's an amazing array of glass design options. Torrington Lumber Company, 281 Church Street, Torrington, the home of peach tree doors and windows. The perfect combination of beauty and design. And by Days Inn. On the road, there you go, Days Inn. The newly refurbished Days Inn. 391 Winston Road, Torrington, with an indoor heated pool and fitness center. Free continental breakfast at Days Inn. You're listening to the world of arts people enjoy. WAPJ 89.9 FM, Nutmeg Conservatory Broadcasting in Torrington. And your scheduled three hitters for your Torrington Twisters, Jason Jones, Rob Eachery, and Lou Farrell, the, five, the six, seven, and eight in the lineup for the Twisters. Top of the eighth, the score's four to nothing. Jason Jones has to hit here, as if you haven't been listening to the game and just joined in, Eric Cloninger, the catcher for the Torrington Twisters, was hit in the arm by a pitch. He had to come out of the ball game. Torrington was using Wick Udy. Wick Udy was the DH. So what they've done is Wick Udy had to go to the catcher, but when you take your DH and you move him out of the out of the out of the DH position and move him to a position spot on the on the field, your pitcher then becomes eligible to hit. So Jason Jones has to bat in the sixth hole. And Jason Jones will lead off here in the top of the eighth. Jason Jones, I do believe, has some at-bats on the year. I'm not sure. No, Jason Jones will be this his first at-bat of the game. I knew we got some pitchers into the game back in the first game of the year because we were short players. But Jason Jones has yet to hit, hit on the season. So Jason Jones first at-bat as a twister here in the top of the eighth in game 24 of the year. And he's a right-handed hitter like he does pitching. I think Coach Greg Hunt would probably just cringe if he went up there and batted lefty, exposing his right hand, right arm. And Jones will have to go up there and hit against Matt Hackey. First pitch, swung on in a line drive, just over the shortstop's head for a base hit. Are you kidding me? Jason Jones with a base hit. Wow, that's some shot by Jason Jones into shallow left center field, and the shortstop, Aquilo, just tapped it with his glove a little bit to stop it from going into deep left center field. I tell you right now, it's a great play by Aquino, Aquilino trying to get that ball. What about Jason Jones? He went up there, and he had one mind in his head. He had one thing in his head, swing at the fastball and swing hard, and that's what he did. He gets a base hit, and now you got your pitcher running the bases, and that will bring up Etri to the plate. Etri, two for three in the ball game. 
And first pitch swinging foul down the right field line. The count's no balls and one strike. What a surprise that was. <laughs> and I mean, the, you know, Aquilo, Aquilo just got a little piece of the glove touching the ball just to slow it down. And, you know, that was a shot by Jones. Well, he's batting one for one on the year, hitting the 1,000. And he's got a very small lead up for his base. And the pitch, fastball outside. He tree squared around the bunt, but pulled back. And the count now one ball and one strike. As Jason Jones, not really what you want to have have is top of the eighth, and you got your starting pitcher who's pitched seven innings out there running the bases in the top of the eighth, but that's the case we have here. And he treated the play at the plate, and Jones actually takes off running, and it's a bunt up the first base line. Jones thinks about going to third as the throw goes to first in time, give a sack bunt to Etri as the runner moves to second. That's Jason Jones, the pitcher out there running, and he was off on the pitch, which pretty much shocked me and everybody else in the press box. And he now moves to second base, and that will bring up Lou Farrell. He is one for three in the ballgame. That was a nice bump by Etri. Uh, ended up halfway between the pitcher's mound and uh, first base. So the pitcher, Hackey, had to go quite a ways to get to it. It was a little closer at first base than I was expecting to it. Etri was getting down there in a hurry, but also nice base running by Jones. And Jones on second. You're starting pitcher now running the bases, and he moves himself to second. And now Farrell, first pitch swinging, fouled on the right field line, out of play, and the count's no balls and one strike. So Torrington up 4 nothing, trying to add on another run. I'd be shocked to see Jason Jones score on a single here because, no offense to Jason Jones, he just needs he runs like a pitcher. I'd hate to be stereotypical, but he runs like a pitcher. He is not that fast, and he's on second base. And the batter, Lou Farrell, in the one pitch, Curveball, he checked his swing, and he does not go around. They appeal, and they say no, and the count one ball and one strike on a curveball in the dirt. So Patrick Hakey, who relieves Nick Allen in the seventh inning, gave up two runs without a hit, came out here in the eighth, gave up a single to Jones. Jones was sacrificed over to second by Rob Etri. And now Lou Farrell trying to drive him home, the 1-1 pitch by Hakey on the way. And call strike two right on the outside corner. A good hard fastball by Hakey, and the count's now one ball and two strikes. Well, I know what you're saying about Jones, though. I mean, certain players, you just know, you just don't envision him flying by third base on his way to home plate. It's just not going to happen. Certain players just aren't as running as, like that. As fast as Garrick Evans is around the bases, Jason Jones is just as slow. <laughs> one, two pitch, curveball got away outside. Counts now two balls and two strikes. And we're not bashing Jason Jones. I mean, he's a pitcher, he doesn't usually hit first at bat of the year finally came just now and he got a single but Jason Jones not the fastest guy at second base so a single by Farrell might not get the job done surprisingly so much the first baseman is guarding the line there's a huge hole between first and second and that's exactly where Farrell hits the ball between and it gets through into outfield for a base hit and sure enough Jones stops at third base so just about everything we called just happened 